every path to greatness starts somewhere. The and once in a while, the starting point itself can be part of the story. So flash back exactly 20 years in a city where a lot of people come to chase their dreams. And a night when some of the greatest hockey careers of this century all began together, including mine. We'd like to select goaltender Marc-Andre Fleury. This is a goaltender people talk about as being a legitimate franchise player. Our draft class has won pretty much every award they give out in this league. The 11 guys have become captains, and to this day, 2003 remains one of the best drafts in the entire history of the NHL. The there's no rhyme or reason why some drafts have more talent than others. But there's no way to deny the excitement when one of those years comes around. Like the night we came into the league. Or tonight, right here in the same place. Music City. It starts with this kid. A natural with no limits. Maybe the next name people are gonna know in hockey and far beyond. But there's plenty more firepower on the ice behind him. A lot more guys who can make this draft the next one they talk about for years to come. Ryan Leonard, cutting his face, red shot, score! Just like me, and Patrice, and Corey, Ryan, and Brent, and all the rest. This is where they're starting their path. Tonight. Pretty good story, eh? Boys? Greatness awaits. Welcome to the 2023 NHL Draft in Nashville. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Nashville for the 2023 Upper Deck NHL Draft, rounds two through seven. This is Music City, the place where people come to chase the dream of making it big on country music's biggest stage. Only this stage is a little bit different, but those dreams remain the same. For these kids, it's the NHL, and today is one step closer to that goal. Connor Bedard took that step yesterday. That was a given. What happens today, we don't know. We'll find out over the course of this afternoon. The Anaheim Ducks will be the first team on the clock with pick number 33 as they mull over their options right there. The floor is packed, the teams are set, and so are we inside Bridgestone Arena. Welcome to Nashville and welcome upstairs. Here with our guys, Jason, Reeder, and Sam. I'm Jameson. Welcome to Nashville. What a town it is. I'm just a little disappointed because I was told Reeder was showing up in a cowboy hat and a bolo tie today. Not the case. No, I couldn't get my hat through a security, so they had to hold it. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, that was me. All right, we digress, we move on. Jason, day two, what is the strategy here for those 32 teams? Nothing changes, fellas. Stick to your list. You've been working all season long. You've built it out to this point in time. There wasn't a single trade in the first round, which is an anomaly. I haven't, in my history in the game, ever seen no movement in the first round, picks or players in and out or otherwise. Stick to your list, nothing changes. As you get deeper into the draft, your general manager might tap you on the shoulder and say, we need to fill a need, be prepared for that tap, and just roll on. All right, still plenty of great players available. Uh, after day number one, and you just think back to the last time the NHL draft was held here in Nashville, 2003. Look at some of those names. Future Hall of Famers, Patrice Bergeron, Shea Weber, Corey Crawford, David Backus. Loved the flow back then. Joe Pavelski, <laughs> round number seven, and Dustin Bufflin in round number eight when we had eight rounds. We don't have eight rounds, we have seven. Sam, round two, who's some of the guys best available here coming up? You know, JP talked about there being no trades because people were really happy with the players they were getting in round one, and I still do believe that that exists well into round number two. Here's a couple of guys I'm keeping my eye on. Riley Height of the Prince George Cougars, over 90 points this year. Nick Lardis, a new man after traded from Peterborough to Hamilton in the Ontario Hockey League. Gavin Brindley, what kind of recommendations would he have gotten from Adam Fantilli, his line mate at Michigan? Casper Holton and shoots it hard, big body guy. Lucas Dragasev, are you kidding me? 75 points as a 17-year-old from the back end. And Edgham Moran, smooth skater out of the Moncton Wildcats program. 
He's where these guys were ranked up to 39 in terms of their ranking for NHL Network. Let's see what happens today, but I think a lot of them we'll see going early in this round, too. All right, Reader, how about a prospect to watch? Oh, it's a deep draft. Sammy, you said it. There's a, a group of players who could have easily gone in the first round. I really thought that Andrew Crystal from the Kelowna Rockets was going to go in the first round. 1.76 points per game in the WHL. That was third in the WHL. 39 goals in 54 games. Come on, guys. You want a goal scorer. Why wouldn't you take Andrew Crystal? That's why I expected Crystal to be going in the first round. I kind of had him at number 22. Expected that he would have gone. I would expect he's going to go early in the second round. Goal scorers are what the game's all about. And Andrew Crystal scores goals. All right, we'll look forward to that. Uh, we're up here, the better looking half of our coverage, down on the draft floor this morning. Uh, we've got Jackie Redman, EJ Raddick, and Mike Kelly down there as we'll check in with them throughout the afternoon. Uh, Jackie, good morning. What's the word down there on the floor? Well, good morning. I hate to break it to you guys, but no cowboy hats down here either. <laughs> uh, the disappointment is off the charts uh, for me there. I thought at least one of us would bring some cowboy swag to the side set, but uh, no such luck. Either way, it is day number two. I've said over and over how much I love the entirety of this event, and we're going to do some great interviews here uh, up on the set. And Mike, you're joining us this year on the side set, and you do great work with Sport Logic and for the NHL Network as well. So I want to know how these projections and rankings and lists, as they say, I mean, we heard Jason, don't stray from the list. Well, when yeah. it comes to projections, we almost always have to stray from the list. But how, <laughs> how do you put it together? Yeah, so for us, you know, analytics have, have come a long way, especially in recent years. And it's something that every organization is using. Uh, majority of the NHL teams use our draft uh, package as well. So what we try to do, you'll take a look at it. An example of some of the information that we're looking at and providing. Danny Nelson being an example uh, as somebody that we had 27th overall. I'm sure he'll go uh, in the second round here today. But a trend line of where this player has performed relative to the other players in the draft class. So you see that Danny Nelson had a good, strong finish to the season. You see some strengths and development areas, comparables as well. And the important thing for us to do, number one, we're tracking all the games that these players are playing with their clubs, but also all their tournament games as well. And beyond that, then you're looking at trying to adjust for different league strengths. Some guys may play in the Czech League, some guys in the Canadian Hockey League. You're adjusting for league strengths, trying to make this as apples to apples as you can so that you can evaluate the players fairly and then try to project them. So this is a piece of the puzzle that all teams in the NHL are using as a part of their process. We got charts today, baby. Yes, we, we got do. charts. Uh, <laughs> Each as we get ready for round two here, who are maybe a couple of the teams that intrigue you? Well, I, I think the Philadelphia Flyers are intriguing to me based on what they did last night. I mean, it's a new era in Philly, right? You have Danny Briere and Keith Jones at the helm now. They went out and made a bold strike to get uh, Matt Bay Mitchkoff. They kind of had a uh, meeting with him uh, in Philly, kind of stealth. And uh, they end up picking him at seven. They get Oliver Bonk at, uh, you know, a little later, 22nd, a defenseman. So I'll be keeping an eye on them. No picks in the second round, but they've got two picks in the third round. And the Chicago Blackhawks, the re uh, the reimagining of the Chicago Blackhawks yes. continues. And you can see here in the second round, they've got four picks in the second round, two more in the third. And Kyle Davidson continues to do his business, and he did a little bit more today. Well, we didn't have any deals uh, over the duration of round one last night here at Bridgestone Arena, but uh, we've already got some news as we get ready for round number two, and that's where we turn to our NHL Network insider, Elliot Friedman, with more on what's going on with the Chicago Blackhawks. Yes, Jackie, something for me to do, finally, after a quiet first round, no trades in, for the first time in 16 years. The Blackhawks have acquired another second round pick, but it's in 20 26. Josh Bailey, they take from the Islanders. The Islanders incentivize it with the pick, and in return, future considerations. Probably never see them. It's a salary dump. Bailey didn't play at the end of last year. The Islanders and Bailey knew that they had to move on. A fresh start. He gets it in Chicago. And one thing about the Islanders now, they have 10 million in cap space. So with some free agents to deal with, including Scott Mayfield, I'm very curious if this gives them the flexibility to get some business done that they otherwise couldn't do. Jameson? All right, Elliot, thank you very much. I was told we didn't have to pay Elliot if he didn't break a trade. Well, we broke the budget here on day two for the NHL Network and across Sportsnet and the world. We're going to take a quick timeout. When we come back, we'll get it going with round two. The Anaheim Ducks will officially be on the clock. The 2023 Upper Deck NHL Draft is here. Scan the QR code on your screen to collect a piece of history with this free digital card set featuring some of your favorite number one 
Welcome back to the 2023 Upper Deck NHL Draft, rounds two through seven. Deputy Commissioner Bill Daly on the stage right now, opening up officially day number two and officially putting the Anaheim Ducks on the clock. They have three minutes to make the pick in round number two. Reader, you surprised with the way Anaheim went in round number one? They had the second overall pick, and they did not choose Adam Fantilli. They went Leo Carlson. Maybe a little bit surprised, but the, on the other hand, uh, I'd heard a lot of rumblings that Lil Carlson ahead, was Pat uh, Verbeek's guy, and that was the guy that the, they were going to take. From course, Seattle of uh, the WHL, Neil, Nico Mayadovic. And I'm a selected Nico Mayadovic from Seattle of the Western League. Okay, Nico Mayadovic. Mike Kelly, a left Blue winger Dragons. out of Seattle. What do we know about him? Hey, well, Mike Kelly has already dropped out, trying to get him dialed back in, but Jason. Yeah, so with Nico, what they're going to be getting here, guys, is uh, a, a player to play on the flank with Carlson. I mean, that's where it starts, right? Good size. His mechanics uh, skating between the, the paint there, the blue lines on transition. He's got a From ways to go. So his mechanics are, but he goes to the hard areas, 30 goal scorer, cleans up the business around the crease. Important. You know, one thing really important for me about Miatovic, he's the guy that in Seattle, Matt Odette relied on in every single situation. They had a team full of rock stars, NHL draft picks, but Miatovic was out there in the important matchups, taking some of the tough draws. I love this player, I love the size, and I love the fact that here he is as the first guy on day number two from the Seattle Thunderbirds. Okay, uh, the Columbus Blue Jackets selecting their pick, Gavin Brindley. Uh, Jason, a center out of the University of Michigan. Just another goal blue going down to Ohio State territory. I don't know how they're going to uh, adjust all this, but From this Chippewa, kid is outstanding. Plays really fast, all situations, dangerous off the rush, goes to the hard areas. He's a, he's a pit bull, guys. He's not tall, but he's built like a fire hydrant. Well, how about this? That's Instant chemistry. Yeah, absolutely. Sorry, sorry, Sammy, to interrupt you. That, that tip that was just shown there, that's just an unbelievable tool in the toolkit. Like that, turning your blade up, reader, you know, instead of tipping a puck down, tipping it upwards, exceptional hand-eye coordination. Thought process in-game, too, is something that Brinley really has, and that's a perfect example of it, be able to reverse the stick uh, in-game at, at game speed. Jason, how about Adam Guyan, our first goaltender off the board here to the Chicago Blackhawks? Think Ben Bishop, guys, giant. This kid's six foot seven. Uh, he's fluid in the crease, too, so he, he boxes up well. He plays between his posts. No unnecessary movements. Eats pucks from long range, so his rebound control is on point. Big guys, though, when they do get moving laterally off speed, if you start getting moved out, uh, oh, pardon me, this is Guyan. This isn't Rabel. They went to Guyan. Sorry, we didn't get the screen there. So, so hey, listen, sorry, my bad, Guyan. Oh, Slovakia at the uh, World Juniors, super oh, athletic goal center. Chip well in the North American League, Green Bay in the USHL, highly competitive. This is an athletic butterfly style goalie. Crazy story how he made it, though, all the way to Slovakia and ends up playing really well. He wasn't really on the radar at the start of the year. But a lone situation gets him to the USHL, of course, gets him to the World Juniors. He becomes a starter and a rock star from there. All right, so the San, San Jose Sharks are making their next selection. Sam Casper. Well, Casper Halton is a, a big guy. When we watched him at the Helenka Gretzky, he was a guy who was playing the wing but took a lot of important draws and was absolutely dominant in the faceoff circle. But a guy who prefers to play the wing. So when it comes to Halton and the uh, one of the Finnish ahead, players that had a real good uh, under-18 tournament. And Holtonen's a guy that adds some size. He adds some shooting ability. Those are his two main assets. Go ahead, Tampa. Okay, so Tampa, Tampa Bay, Bay making selects. their pick. Ethan Gauthier from Sherbrooke. Ethan Gauthier, right winger from Sherbrooke out of the QMJHL. He was named the 2022-2023 Michael Bossy Trophy winner. That's the Q's top professional prospect. So this kid, highly touted and a highly offensive player. Yeah, this guy's a little bit of a Swiss Army knife for me, to be honest with you. So he does a lot of things. He's going to play with a little bit of bump to his game. Some transition pace, some, some deception off the rush. All situations, coming off the flank again on the power play, right shot, opens up uh, from the weak side. Uh, pedigree too, right, Sammy? Yeah, his dad, Denny, a former uh, NHL player, of course, for a long time. 
assistant coach with uh, the Drummondville Voltageurs and a guy that uh, many people had predicted to go in round number one. But challenged by his brother Caden, who he was teammates with in Sherbrooke. Good season for Ethan Gauthier. The Arizona Coyotes have selected Michael Marabo from Omaha, the United States Hockey League. Oh. Okay, Michael Robble going to the Arizona Coyotes. The, uh, the matching suits. We didn't see him on stage today. We saw him in day one. What do we know about Michael Robble? Well, there's an echo in the building, fellows, after we didn't get the screen up on Guyane. Here we are with Harable after I've already described him once. Giant in the net. Look at this kid. He's six foot seven. That's his agent, Al Walsh. There. He's just towering over him. Hey, he's athletic for his size. Like I said, he eats pucks from distance. Reader plays right between his posts. Big guys don't have to play up in the crease, and they got to stay between the posts. At a young age, being able to play between your posts at six, seven, a lot of goaltenders are young. Lose their posts the odd time. Hundred percent too active, and guys at your level, they score goals when you get too active. What's Next going on with Phil Armstrong? Are they, is this the NBA draft? You look at the guys they took yesterday, and, and Simashev and Daniil Boot. All these guys are over 6'3". It's the, the NBA draft for Arizona. All right, well, Buffalo just elected Anton Wahlberg, Jason, the center out of Malmo of the Swedish junior hockey team. This, from this guy the brings understated value. You Christmas. have to watch him real closely. He's a big body. He does a lot of the, the heavy Washington lifting Capitals. in the hard areas, extending plays. Good Andrew pick. He's going to go around the net, the around the crease, work uh, below the goal line to extend plays. The next selection, real good pick there. The ninth pick in the second. Round, the Andrew Red Crystal, Wings. the next one off the board. Jason, left winger out of Kelowna, WHL. One of my favorite personalities on the draft by far. Oh, this dope. kid looks like he just came right off the beach and surfing. He's an electric personality. He makes you smile. If you're having a bad day, come to the rink. This is a great teammate. Offense, offense, offense. I mean, he scores goals. He was kind of out on his own island there in Kelowna. They're rebuilding, and he put up huge numbers. This kid is uh, pure offense. It's the fourth of that Bedard friendship group. We saw guys yesterday, uh, Wood and Benson, go along with Bedard. This guy's the fourth in that group of players that grew up playing uh, together, and uh, I know they'll be pretty happy for AC here today. It's the a roller a hockey group. That was a roller hockey yeah, group. Yeah, the roller hockey team. Yeah, they're waiting. Western Kent Kent at home. I hope it worked out for you, Kent, last night. For those, right. The, the so good we, guys there. So we saw Washington make the pick. If you look at the draft board, the Detroit Red Wings now have three picks in a row. What do you think happens here? Someone's a, throwing a hat. <laughs> right? Yeah, the hat trick. <laughs> but Jason, is this an area where you maybe trade, ahead, trade move? Trade. We haven't had any Detroit movement selects, at this point. Tender, trade, I think there's Augustine. too many names available on their on their list, guys. I think they just keep rolling it the out. Detroit so they just Red went the goalie, Trey Trey Augustine. Augustine. Yeah, so they went to Augustine USA, right into their uh, backyard there at the U National U.S. National Team Development, development program. program. Really athletic, great feet, tracks the puck aggressively, the fronts it as well. But he's a guy that plays higher in his net, wings. okay? He's a little bit smaller than some of the other guys. Plays higher, but super athletic, great feet. 909 win percentage this year was the best ever by a development program goaltender in one season. And these guys have churned out the goalies in the last couple of years. Sure yeah. The program uh, has been really successful at you know developing players of all sorts. And here, Augustine comes off the court. Moves so smoothly. He was, he was such a backbone of the team. Team, uh, we're going to see him down the road. But for Trey Augustine, very interesting. Third goaltender now in the second round. It's a very deep draft. Just shows you how strong these goaltenders are and how important goaltender is. Usually, we see them in the second round. We see them in groupings, and so yep. far, we've seen three off the board earlier in the second. There's always a run. At the table, as soon as one goes, everybody's scurrying but to look at their goalie list. Does it help for the Red Wings with three picks in a row as well? It's like, you know 100%. what, this is, we can't maybe expect them to take a goalie. They're not going to trade these picks. And the Bruins, I think, last time we saw 3-0 and o was Boston a few, few years in back. The first, first round. In the first round. Yeah. DeBrusque, Sinitian, Zabor. Yeah, no yeah. goaltenders taken. This is interesting. The second round, we'll start with the goaltender. Will they change it up, go maybe uh, one of each defenseman and forward as well? Yeah, I mean, that's the, strategically they could. It depends, again, how the list goes or if they're going to trade one of these out, Reader, like uh, kick it down the, the next year or the year. Like 2026 20, picks are starting to get traded off the board, which is incredible to me. But, hey, they got a timeline in this kid. He's going to Michigan State. Uh, goalies traditionally at least three years of college. And then, of course, they usually don't hit till their second contract cycle. Like their entry-level deal, it takes time for these guys. So this is a long play. Got some proximity there too. Plymouth being so close to Detroit, there's a lot of uh, the higher end scouts. When you look at Draper and you look at Sean Horkoff sitting at the table, Steve Eiserman would have been able to see Augustine uh, very easily and on a number of occasions. All right, we see the Red Wings taking some time. Does that indicate that something might be happening or the fact that they have three picks in a row and they're just taking their time with who they're going to select now 
uh, with their 41st and 42nd pick. Uh, they're making a call to somebody at this stage. They don't wait after Augustine. After you pick a goalie, you already had a guy in the sure. waiting there. So, yeah, good call, JB. Steve One thing Eisenberg I just uh, phone, so the, did they call time out there? I'm not sure if he called time, but he's definitely on the phone. Yeah, chit chatting with someone that he and Chris Draper. No time out yet because you can see that clock still ticking down. 37 seconds and counting. Something I noticed here, the last two picks, just to fill, the, let you guys know, like Andrew Crystal, uh, Evan Marble for the Washington Capitals, he's right there in Kolona. So that's the backyard guy. Detroit and Red then again, Trey Augustine, backyard for the, the Red Wings. Andrew Gibson. All right, the pick is in. The Sue. Red Wings Greyhounds, Andrew Gibson Andrew going to the Gibson Detroit Sosa Red Wings. Wings. The Ontario Hockey Sammy. League. Well, Andrew Gibson is a really now interesting story because as a 6'3 right shot defenseman, this is a guy who had a lacerated kidney earlier this year. He missed eight weeks, so he kind of went under the radar for a little while. This happened on a hit by Kyle Jackson, North Bay Battalion, and he ends up being out for six weeks as a result of that. But the key part for him is he was able to get back healthy enough to be able to play in the under 18s. Played the top four role there, played a ton of minutes. You see he's got us some bump to his game. And we always talk about the value of having a right shot defenseman. Andrew Gibson is all of that. And again, talk about that backyard pick Detroit, pretty close to Sault Ste. Marie. A lot of opportunities to be able to scout there. And you can see in all those all those videos, he's using his stick, his stick work. And that's something that the Detroit Red Wings and Steve Eisenman's group have always taken. It's the intelligent player. May not be the biggest, may not be the smallest, but the intelligent player. When you watch Andrew Gibson play, his stick work is able to c uh, control down the zone zone and close gaps in the neutral zone with his stick uh, is obviously something that was noticed. And we saw it in every one of those videos. His stick was on the ice and he leads with his stick. That's usually a good indication of a smart thinking defenseman, not rushing into plays, overplaying and being over physical, using your stick and thinking the game. Like okay. good for him though, to be able to come from that. I know it was a scary injury. is a little bit touch and go, but. He responded and rebounded well. All right, Steve Eisenman, you saw him back on the phone. Put that phone down. Yeah, it looks like announce. Bill Daly's at the podium. Here we go. Detroit has traded this pick, number 43, to Nashville for picks number 47 and number 147. Nashville, you're on the clock. So the Red Wings trading pick number 43. Again, that was their third in the row. Here in round number two, in exchange for the Nashville Predators, they will receive pick 47 and pick 147 a lot later on this afternoon. So Nashville now officially on the clock. So Detroit must have a bucket of players that they like there, that knowing they're going to slide back four spots, they're going to get someone that they really like, especially after addressing a, a goalie and a Nashville. defenseman. Anytime you can add more darts, it seems to be the positive Nashville and proper thing. From Rogle in Sweden, Felix Nilsson. Felix Nielsen. The Nashville Predators have selected Felix Nielsen. You can see the embraces right Sweden. there with the family members. And Next selection belongs to the Chicago Some of the Blackhawks. best moments we see right there are those embraces. And we ask them after, hey, what did you say in that moment? They don't say anything. They just hug and they feel it. Sam, what do we know about this? Felix Nielsen. Well, maybe the most improved player from the beginning of the year to the end of the year in Sweden. This guy was ranked 78th at the midterm by National Hockey League Central Scouting. He ended up 24th in the final version so that says a lot about how national hockey league thought about him in 36 Red games Chicago. he puts up 41 points gets into I'm some shl games 18 of them and a couple of playoff games and i think when you have that sustainability uh, as a young Black player and you're getting minutes it speaks very well to Russia. how uh, how well thought of you are by the organization and of course scouts uh, feeling the same thing roman cancer of the next one off the board jason a right winger out of magnitogors the mhl over in russia yeah, so these are the types of guys that have been hard to get, right? You know, you're, you're scouting these guys on video, but he had an excellent year at the MHL level, over a point per game, deployed primarily at even strength on the first power play unit as well. He's another guy who's uh, a little smaller, so he plays his off wing. He opens up the play reader, fronts it the whole time, so nothing's getting, ahead, uh, he's not getting checked from the backside as Buffalo much. Everything's in front of him. Really see that off wing player more in the European style. I and mean, Steve Larmer is always the guy I think of playing the off wing, the Canadian who did that, who played Chicago for years, uh, and was dynamite in the off wing. Very much more consistent play in the European game, especially in Russia. I think of the wedge can same type of thing. Absolutely. Off wing gets the better angle on the shot. All right, so the Buffalo Sabres at 45, selecting Maxim Sturbach, a defenseman out of Sioux Falls in the USHL, Sam. 
So the USHL numbers didn't really pop for this guy, and a lot of people went and looked and said, well, why not? He does have those kind of tools. And not that he's going to be an offensive defenseman, but when he got Go back ahead, playing with the national team, I love this national game. I mean, JB, you and I were watching this guy, the World Juniors, thinking, wow, this guy's something else. Again, another right shot national defenseman. He moves pucks well. I like the way he defends, even though he's not the biggest guy. He still defends with a good stick and body positioning. Not small at 6'1", 198, but that right shot uh, ability and the fact that he, he's over over in North America, you have a chance to see him playing in the USHL, and then his performance internationally, I think, speaks volumes. Callan Lynn celebrating with his family and friends right there. The Nashville Predators draft pick at number 46, Sam. He is a left winger out of rear Red Deer, excuse me, in the WHL. Well, you know what? I, I got to know Kalen a little bit, and he's not going to be offended when I call him a grease bag. That is exactly what he is. He gets in your face, he chirps you, he bothers you, he hits you, he sticks you. And this is the type of player, yeah, he's got a thin frame. There's some um, history in the family. Obviously, Cole Lind, his brother playing with Seattle, had a great AHL playoffs. And uh, this is the type of guy who has that kind of skill. Steve Connor-Waltruck, the coach in Red Deer this past season, absolutely loved this guy. He had to get into the room every now and then and dial him back because he's so energetic and he's really, uh, you know, this guy'd make a pot of coffee nervous. That's the way he plays the game. So I love that energy that he brings to the table. I love the chirp. Got to see him beef up here a little bit. Yeah, start eating the pasta. I agree. The 158 is, is pretty light. It's six yeah. foot one. 158 yeah. is okay if you're five nine. But again, remember these guys are 18 years old. Young guys, they've got lots of time to grow and to build. And he comes with, uh, like you said, he's that type of guy. If you call him a, uh, anything to do with grease and hockey, it's usually pretty good. If you're <laughs> yeah. greasy, it means you're in the mix and you're a player. You're in the game. Uh, you mentioned his brother, uh, brother Cole, leading the 2023 AHL playoffs in points for the Kraken affiliate. Coachella. What a story that was, right? The Coachella Firebirds in their very first year of existence going all the way to the AHL finals under the uh, tutelage and the guidance of Dan Bilesma right there. So Lynn taken by the Preds at 46. And what do you know? Steve Eiserman and the Red Wings back on the clock and using that clock. So happy for Lynn just to watch him. He had a real uh, difficult time in the playoffs. Ended up getting knocked out and, and missed some time. But uh, there he is at the combine. He's got that big smile on his face. Hey, Sammy's yelling from across the way. Like, this guy is loud. He is boisterous. He is yeah. so much fun. That's a really good pick there for Nashville. And I think the fans will really take to his style of yeah. game. Loud and boisterous. You think he's going to be wearing that uh, yeah, Nashville trade. jersey around all day, all night, and maybe all through the weekend? Oh, yeah. Sticks around here? No doubt. Uh, it's funny because he's kind of the opposite of Cole. Cole is a much more quiet, reserved type of player. The Detroit Red Wings have selected Brady Cleveland from the U.S. Under-18 National Team Development Program. All right, the pick is in, 47, Brady Cleveland the pick in the out of the round, U.S. Overall development the Program, Sam. Plans. I don't think there's any question that this is a projection pick, but Steve Eiserman likes his big D. Look at Evanson, look at Sider. Brady Cleveland is along those lines. For me, this guy's going to be a complimentary back-pairing type of player. He can shoot the puck, and I don't think he's going to be a power play guy, but I do think he has the ability to play with some bite in his game. I'd like to see him work on the puck skills a little bit more. But again, JB, you talked about these backyard uh, picks. Again, at the under-18 program, big, tall defenseman. Steve Eiserman goes down that road once again. Yeah, right. he's a throwback, guys. He's uh, he's a big body who would have uh, been a real punishing player in the 80s, 90s, even early 2000s. Now, he just needs to get there quick enough, make a first pass. University of Wisconsin will be happy to have him, but he's a fantastic skater. He's got great feet, moves extremely well. Like Brady Cleveland, he, he could be one of those sleeper picks we talked about in five years, about how, how strong he is on the back end for the wings. Calgary selecting at number 48, ATN Moran Raider, a defenseman. Out of Moncton. All right, so that's the difference between Brady Cleveland and Tim Moran. Moran is an all-skill, puck-moving defenseman, sees the ice, sees plays before they happen. Tremendous, tremendous uh, ability with the puck. One of the top scorers at 72 points in 67 games for Moncton, the QMJHL. He came over to the World Championship, played last three games because of injury, stepped in, had one assist in those three games. But you talk about a guy who can move the puck from behind his own net to the front of the opposition's net. This is the guy. He's a tremendous skater, tremendous skill. Moves as well laterally uh, as he does north and south. 
And uh, you talk to offense, you talk to defenseman, Aitam Moran is the guy in this game. Yeah, I had Mono last summer, lost 15 pounds, came back. He promised the Mike and Wildcats he'd be back within four weeks. He didn't get into any exhibition games, but from there on, he took off. They like his IQ, his ability to move pucks, make plays, a little bit better along the blue line, and maybe some undercover skill there for Etienne Moran. All right, Danny Nelson, uh, certainly the Islanders are familiar with the last name Nelson, a center out of the development program. Favorite player growing up was Zach Parise. He wears 11 because of him. He is committed to Notre Dame. Elliot, we officially had a trade earlier today after no trades on day one, and it sounds like something could be coming down the pipe. What do we know? Just official. We're working on it. Kyler Yamamoto and Klim Costin go from Edmonton to Detroit for future considerations. Edmonton was capped tight. They needed some flexibility, so I'm not surprised, surprised this happened. Just that they went together. I didn't know if I saw that coming, but that does happen to Detroit, Jameson. All right, Elliot, appreciate that. Guys, reaction to what we just heard from Elliot. Yamamoto's got a little bit of Fabry in him. And uh, then you protect them and insulate them with Clint Costin. I, I think Costin is a really sneaky player. Like, I love his size. I love the bite he plays with. And as being a former first-round pick, don't sleep on his skill. He can play with skilled guys all day long. But add that grit that you see in the playoffs. I like that move for Detroit. All right, the Seattle Kraken Chicago Blackhawks making a pick here. Carson Rakoff, left, left winger, Sam out of Kitchener. Yeah, so again, another interesting player who experienced some inconsistencies in the year. If you go back to the Linka Gretzky, I like the way that he played a different style of game and showed off a different element to his game. He played on the PK, he played with a lot of bump and grind to his game and wasn't being relied on as a scorer. In Kitchener, it was a little bit of the flip side of that. He had to be relied on more of a scorer. And because of some of the inconsistencies in his game, there was some first round talk about this player. He ends up at number 50, but he's got size and he has really, really good skill. You good, go back and look it. at some of his tapes from minor hockey, really from impressive stuff. Weekend, yeah, he's long. Carson Off the Garrison. rush, he's long. So if he gets the edge, he's hard to get out to defend against. You know, just the puck is so far Garrison. away from him, Reader. Uh, but the Rolling engine's got to be going Brandon all the time yeah. for big guys like that to have the production that they project to have or they hope to have. All right, so Chicago was supposed to select at 51. They flipped that pick to Philadelphia and the Flyers selecting Carson. The Yarnison, a goaltender, another goalie off the board here. Round number two, Sam. Yes, sir. From the Brandon Wheat Kings and the guy whose numbers don't pop. But I love the story about Good this guy. Seattle. He's got a musical background and he likes to play a little guitar on his own. But here's a player who has a lot of calm to him. And I think about the under-18s, Reader. You were there for that. The first game, they get blown up by Sweden, 8 nothing. But he wasn't deterred. He went to Jeff Truitt and said, hey, I want back in. I want another crack at it. And he ends up leading them to a, a bronze medal. But a guy who's really calm, plays with a lot of poise. On many nights, he gave the Brandon Wheat Kings a chance to win. Didn't quite get him into the playoffs. I would have liked to have seen him steal a couple games. to get Brandon in. Didn't work out that way. But still, you have to like the character of this young man. U18s is a bigger stage than the WHL, and to get blown out in that first game, that was a terrible game. That was yeah. not Bjarnerson's fault in that game at all. It was a, a terrible team game by Team Canada, and Bjarnerson came back and was a pillar for this team throughout that tournament. The team struggled a little bit without the puck defensively. Bjarnerson was very, very good, uh, like you said, leading his team to the bronze medal. Jason, 52, Oscar Fisker, Molgard to the Kraken. I can't uh, over... I just can't explain it to you guys enough that. how elite this team was skating-wise, Team Sweden, and this guy fits the bill. There's another player who's still left on the board, Nick Lardis out of Hamilton. These two kids could be the two most elite skaters in the forward group in the draft. That's what Fisker Mulgaard is. He's quick out of the out of the gates. He's got a great glide. He's a motion player. Offense is his upside. LA Kings are up next at number 54, the Minnesota Wild. At number 53, selecting Rasmus Kumpalainen, ahead, Jason, a center, out of the Pelicans junior team of the Finnish Junior League. From Libra. Yeah, so this kid is on the rise as well. He had a great under-18 tournament. Good size. He kind of does a little bit of everything for the Finns. Power play, penalty kill, a lot of the heavy lifting. So I project him as a bottom six forward who's going to be a role guy. But in time, he could, you know, slide into a 3F, occasionally 2F second power play unit uh, provider there for the Minnesota Wild. At number 54, the LA Kings reader, it's Jakob Dvorak. Uh, we didn't get to see this kid at the World Junior Championships in 2023 because he broke his collarbone. When he does play, what do we know about him? Well, we know he's big and he likes to play physical. Six foot five. Surprised the like Kings for taking a big physical defenseman. A little bit of Matias Samuelson in him, or maybe a little Ben Sherratt. Tremendous leadership character. 
at the U18s in 2023. He was captain of Czechia with three points in five games. Moves the puck extremely well, but he's more known for his solid defensive defenseman. He's an excellent skater. Uh, he's a big time physical player at six foot five. Uh, you'll see probably see more of the physicality come over in the North American game than we saw in Europe. But Jacob Dvorak's a nice pick. For Jason, how about the Hawks getting Martin Misiak, a right winger out of Youngstown of the USHL? Yeah, so he came over after the World Junior Tournament and joined Youngstown, went on a nice playoff run there when they won the USHL uh, championship. Uh, this kid here, <laughs> he's got a little cockiness to him. It's fun to watch. He's got good size. Um, not a ton of bump and grind for that size, though. He's a skilled guy. So uh, on the power play, again, he loves to have the puck. He wants to make plays. Uh, just, you know, he's a yeah, good skater. We see that that's an accurate sk uh, scouting report. Good skater, good quickness and balance. His center of gravity is so really good. So he's hard to knock off bucks, but he's not a guy that goes and knocks other people off bucks. Barry, defenseman Bo Akey. Oh. 56, Bo Akey, Sam. Edmonton the Oilers the with their first Bo pick Akey here in Barry round number two. Entire, Bit of an adjustment for Bo Akey this year because he started the year with the Barry Colts as the go-to guy for Marty Williamson there. But as things started to turn and Brant Clark came back from the National Hockey League, some of those minutes got bumped. So there's some adversity for a guy in his draft year. He's getting all the primetime minutes. Now he has to acquiesce to Brant Clark. But it actually turned out to be a really good thing because I think Brant Clark has grown. I think he's matured. He comes back from the NHL. He helps young, uh, mentor a young Bo Akey, and you get a chance to see this guy as a great skater. He's got a little bit of skill, too. Like, he can oh, shoot yeah. the puck. Like, he, this is the type of guy here at 56. I think Edmonton would be really happy with getting here. Again, you're looking at a list of players that I think a lot of people, probably up until about 50, would have had in their first round. And that's why we haven't seen a ton of action, yet people really happy about what they're getting here. Seattle at number 57, Mike Lucas Draga Civic, a defenseman out of Tri City in the WHL. Mike. I'm getting Lucas Draga Civic. We've got him ranked 23rd. So, uh, in my eyes, I think this is a really good pick. Uh, really good with the puck, good shot. Skating is a, a development area for him again, but that's not uncommon with prospects. The way that he gets up the ice in transition, though, um, is impressive. So, you talk about the modern game, the modern NHL defenseman, uh, Lucas Travis, Dragasevich rather, I think checks a lot of those boxes for Seattle. I had him higher, so obviously I like to pick at 57. The Anaheim Ducks. Lenny Heymanaho, Jason, a right winger. He played the entire season in Liga, made his league debut at age 17. Yeah, no, this is a guy that, like you said, played the entire season in Liga, which is you know, an anomaly on that, that that team. Having said that, he is a late birthday, a November birthday. Uh, you know, mid-range offense in Liga, his uh, element definitely leans offense. He was deployed at even strength and the power play. He's not a burner in open ice, guys. He's an average plus. Great mitts, though. Able to score from range. Great release. All right, next up for the Anaheim Ducks. They've got two in a row. Uh, Kerry Terrance, Reader. I love Kerry Terrance. He played in the area of the OHL, but you really noticed him a lot when he played with the U.S. and won a gold medal at the under-18. One of the very few players that make the transition to, to be added to the team of players that play together for two years. Terrance has got tremendous speed, tremendous skill with the puck. He's a shooter. He scored 30 goals in 67 games in the area of the OHL. This guy can skate. He can absolutely fly. Not afraid to get physical, but he's what he's got to continue to work on is his in-game decisions. He's a goal scorer around the net, but his in-game decisions of puck moving and finding openings or something he's going to work on. But you talk about goal scoring and speed, that's Kerry Terrence. All right, Ducks with back-to-back -back picks here with their second pick at number 60. They're going with Damian Clara Mike, another goaltender off the board here in round two. This is my guy right here, Damian Clara. He was, uh, you know, not on a lot of lists in terms of being a top goaltender. When you look at some of the guys, uh, a couple have gone off the board already, but he's a big guy, 6'6", born and raised Italian, played a little bit in Sweden recently. And I talked to some teams that had him really high on their goaltending list. And there are some people who believe that when all is said and done, six, seven, 10 years down the road, we may be looking at Damian Clara as a, if not the top goalie in this draft. He's very raw needs some coaching development at higher levels which he will get but the tool set for this guy the raw ability is very very high so i'm not surprised to see him go in the second round i love that pick by the anaheim ducks the dallas stars at 61 reader tristan bertucci defenseman from flint 
six two one seventy five uh, one seventy five a left shot the very strong hockey IQ moves the puck extremely well his skating is probably his best attribute they call it a, a, a four skilled skater he, he can move in any direction with the puck without the puck defense extremely well with his skating he's so strong at being able to get up and close gaps in the neutral go, neutral zone to shut things down one of the best strengths is his, his, his hockey IQ and confidence with the puck when you think the game extremely well and you have the puck you're going to see the ice extremely well you're going to move the play extremely well play with Flint uh, in the OHL 50 points 39 assists in those 63 games kind of goes here he's a thinker of the game a uh, nice pick nice depth defenseman uh, he'll probably move in you're probably looking in that 3-4 role possibly a secondary power play guy in the future but a nice pick by Dallas I went into Oshawa there to watch him towards the end of the year and I thought wow isn't this is interesting it's been a slow burn for he and head coach Ted Dent and at the start of the year was just playing at playing regular minutes and as things progressed second half of the season next thing you know he's on the power play he's got a little bit of PK time they started to lean on him a little bit more and he came in as a highly touted 16 year old as a first round OHL priority selection now he is blossoming into that player I mean obviously the one thing there, putting on some strength putting on some weight he's working with Gary Roberts uh, so that should definitely help him out but uh, also a guy who if we go back to yesterday uh, lived with Colby Barlow so Colby Barlow had to come down from Beaverton Ontario to play his minor hockey and the Bertucci family ended up taking him in there and they lived with him they trained together for a while really helpful for Colby Barlow I know those two have a lifelong friendship and today and yesterday very special to both of them Lexan, Sweden Felix Unger Sorum all right, so Carolina making their selection Her using two of the three Felix minutes Unger on the Sorum clock. Lexan and at 62, it's Felix Unger Sorum Next for the Carolina the Hurricanes. Panthers. Mike Kelly. I like this because Mike Kelly also, much like Carolina, taking his time. To not pick up his telephone, but his microphone. We'll see. Maybe we lost him down there. All right, at 63, Florida. Grayson Sachin. Sam. Not often times you see a player you uh, leave the U.S. National Training and Development Program, but that's exactly what Sachin did. He's got good pedigree. He starts all the way back from Shattuck St. Mary's, was a teammate of Tyler Petal, who we'll see go a little bit later today out of Drummondville. And those two guys really had a great friendship. But Sachin, in his play with the Seattle Thunderbirds, has to fight through all kinds of layers of drafted draft picks, uh, NHL prospects, to get his playing time. So able to score at even strength started to see some more power play time I love his feet and I love his hands this guy can stick handle in a oh, phone yeah. book he's got that type of ability really really quick soft hands he can make things happen excellent playmaker with creativity and go some ahead, elusiveness in his game hey, if I can just go back to Unger Sorum and yeah, I'll pick up where Mike was going to probably talk about you talk about soft hands yeah Sorum is so the so exact wild wild same he was dynamite for the, the team Sweden George at the Western under 18 Island. 10 points in seven games eight assists That's very so smart extremely smart hockey IQ round. excellent playmaker Jason Riley Heights our last pick here of round number two a center from Prince George pure offense uh, threat off the rush makes plays in tight space Wants the puck all the time. Needs better detail tracking back and providing uh, assistance uh, defensively. 44% right. of his points in the power play this year. You can see the big board right there. 64 picks already down through the course of day one and two. When we come back, we'll be on the clock officially for round number three. Stay with us. The 2023 Upper Deck NHL Draft is here. Scan the QR code on your screen to collect a piece of history with this free digital card set featuring some of your favorite number one draft. Welcome back to the 2023 Upper Deck NHL Draft. Rounds two through seven. Round two in the books. You can see some of the picks here. And the sweaters going on. The suit jackets coming off and dreams being made as they make their way down to meet their teams that they hope to play on the ice in the National Hockey League sometime fairly soon you can take a look as we enter round number three some of the players who have been selected in round number three the likes of Jonathan Quick Brad Marchand Jordan Bennington Jake Gensel Braden Point Adam Fox so it doesn't matter how far or how deep you get in the draft there are still players that can have massive impacts on your organization for years to come oh no question and there's a bunch of kids sitting there and probably disappointed that they didn't go in round two some of them even in round one and you know what doesn't matter where you go it matters what you do after your pick 
Absolutely. Just a door that's open for you. Yep. That's what you do once you go in. All right, so the first pick here in round number three is Colson Petrie from the Anaheim Ducks. Sam, a right winger out of Flint. Yeah, so again, another Ted Dent uh, coach player. But Petrie is a guy who has to play straight lines. He's got good speed. And you can see that the style of game he plays doesn't really match his body style yet. But when he plays straight lines, up and down hockey, he bumps in first on the four checks. That's when he is most successful. Yeah, he's going to score a little bit. He's going to be able to make some plays. But his calling card is the ability to play that power forward role. He just now has to go into a power forward body. Yeah, he's got tons of speed off the rush. He's more of a chip and chase, though, instead of a beat a guy one on one guy. Nothing wrong with the chip and chase game, though. No, there's nothing the matter. When you, when you get the tight games, that's the way you want to play because it's, it's the, the turnovers of the one on one guys. The chip and chase guy is more suited for that National Hockey League style. I'll take a chip and chase over a uh, blue line turnover all day long. How about this guy, Sam? William Whitelaw going to the Columbus Blue Jackets, right winger out of Youngstown. Yeah, well, an, an interesting uh, player, no doubt. But when we saw him at the Lincoln Gretzky, you thought, all right, this guy's got it going on here. And Goes through the USHL, puts up really good numbers there. You get to see here a right shot, so that's always coveted, of course. Getting an opportunity to play some international games, but I don't know. White Law, I think there were some background stories there that were concerning about White Law. I think he was a guy that, if we looked at the start of the year, probably would have projected to be a little bit higher here. The Columbus Blue Jackets have obviously done their due diligence on this player, and now they get to select him here with the second pick of round three. Blackhawks the embrace Nick right there. Can we Hamilton call him William White Claw if he's a hard sell to play against? <laughs> nice. I don't know if Next that works. How about Nashville Nick Lardis? Predators. I'll move it on from the Chicago Blackhawks. Reader. Well, you know, we were talking in the break after the second round. Is Nick Lardis still available? Yes, he is still available. And I don't get this one. Here's a guy who scored 37 goals in 69 games, 65 points. He's 5'11". He, he can score goals. He's got a tremendous shot. He can score from distance. He can score from... Uh, anywhere on the ice, uh, he's got a great motor. He's got a tremendous skill, tr tremendous skating ability, and uh, maybe it's the fact that you know we talked about it, Sam. It's the fact that it's he scoring more from the outside than he does necessarily Go from ahead, in the Nashville. tougher areas. And for Nick Lardis, um, a player Martin, who's Finland, who's Justin moved around a little bit in his OHL career, but he's, he's interesting trades. Uh, but he's playing with Hamilton. He, he's, he still scores goals, and maybe getting to the inside is something that he's going to have yeah. to work on as he moves along. And Jay McKee and the coaching staff there in Hamilton will make sure that that happens. But the interesting part is he got a new life after being traded from Peterborough to Hamilton, where he scored 25 goals in his last 33 games. And that skating ability and scoring ability, those are two highly coveted assets. He is amongst the top of class in both of those areas. But again, it's about playing with some of that grit, determination, getting to inside ice, something he'll continue to work on here. And no doubt Nick will be motivated by going here in round three, but he's got a great group to work with in the Chicago Blackhawks. Jason, what does the hometown team, the National Predators need to know about their pick, Jesse Kieskinen? Well, this is a kid that generally plays the same identity, game in and game out. Uh, he's used in all situations. His best work overall is evident on special teams, though. He's a motion guy. He's quick to space. Secondary scoring upside is possible. He's not a lead offensively guy. He's more of an energy provider. Jason, going right back to you here for the Habs pick at number 69. Jacob Fowler, goaltender off the board at number three. Your guy. That's your guy. Yeah, so this is an interesting one for me. You know, he's... Uh, I want to be delicate with this. There's, he's athletic. He's positionally sound. He makes big saves. He's a proven winner. His fitness is a concern, guys. And I and it's gonna he's gonna have to put in the time and the effort because he's carrying some weight. And it's just gonna be one of those things at a young age. He's just gonna have to buy into the pro process reader. And there's nothing the matter with that. I'm not I'm not saying that it's a huge problem. I'm saying that as the games get harder, faster, more active, your fitness is gonna become more of a factor for you. You want to get in the playoffs, you want to play deep, you want to win those big games, you get into overtime games, no question, and fitness is so important. And for goaltenders, I played a lot of goaltenders who are probably one of the, the, the fittest players ever. I think Bill Ranford, years back when he came in the league, was in incredible shape. And that was in the day where goaltenders were not the fittest. And since then, goaltenders have really taken that upon themselves to, to elevate that level and... Um, but that's something you learn as you get into the pro game. You may not learn it in junior, you may not need it in college, but in the pro game, you're going to need it. All right. The Arizona Coyotes at number 70, selecting Jonathan Castagna, a centerman out of San Andrews College of the CAHS, tied for seventh among all Canadian high school skaters in points this past season at 72 points. I like the three-piece right there. Two-tone three-piece, getting it done on day two. 
Oh. That's the suit of the day for sure so far, fellas. There's no doubt about it. I think yeah. we've got I think we've got contrast. room to grow though. I don't know. It's only contrast six two. In the best. Arizona drafting someone under like six yeah, four. Why'd they take a short guy? That's six two. Bill, Bill Armstrong is one wants to look up to more of his players. What's Billy? About six five? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <General> <laughs> All right, so you can see the uh, profile here on Jonathan Castagna. Uh, NHL Network, we had him at about 130, so significantly higher here at number 70. You can see what he did last year with St. Andrews College. 50 games, 29 goals, 43 helpers, and like we said, Maybe the suit of the day so far, but it's still early. Now he's from Etobicoke, my hometown. So yeah. th th this Wait, guy is that well dressed area? Well dressed area, and, <laughs> and he's, so you know he's gonna he's he's got it in him to play. He played San Andrews College, a very uh, elite school, definitely known more for their education. Yes. And advancing young men and women onto a uh, uh, higher educational levels, not necessarily always known for their hockey program, but they've developed a strong. Castagna. It's nice to see him, uh, John the Castagna, come out and be drafted to. To the Arizona Coyotes. So that's a guy that's a good skater. Like he's he's big, he's he's tall, he's lean, he's a good skater. Those numbers that you see at that level, they're elite for that level. But this is a long-term play for sure for Arizona, and they've got time with their prospect pool being as flush as it is. Well, they got time knowing where they might play in the next couple of years as well. I mean, I, I honestly think that when you look at Arizona and some of the picks that they've drafted, they've pushed, they've kicked the ball down the road here a little bit until some of that stuff gets sorted out. How far down the road do we have to keep kicking that ball, though? No, that, we talk it, about like a guy no, like Logan so Cooley, and he's, he's yep. staying in college, yep. and he's staying in college. We're kicking that ball down the road. At some point, that ball has to, to bounce and stay somewhere, well, right? It's got to have a home. Uh, there's no question, and that part needs to be sorted out. But that's not a, really a concern to Bill Armstrong, other than the fact that he has to go and take the best players, which uh, he feels obviously very strongly about, especially with some of the surprises in round number one, and then... He can kind of manage that part, knowing in the back of his mind that this guy's a college guy. We got a couple of years. This guy's in Europe. We got a couple of years. This guy's playing over in high school. We got a couple of years. I'm gonna say this though, reader. Like, if Logan Cooley, let's just go to him for a second. He decided to go back. If he goes back next year, am I ever getting concerned? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Is it, there's going to be that issue. He can re-enter the draft, or you, is he going to sign with you, become a free agent? He, it's, fact, he can't go to his junior year, Logan yeah. Cooley. I know that's a discussion for next year when we're all gathering, you know, at the draft. But, yeah. Um, keep an eye on that kind but of process. For Arizona, you build assets. Other teams in the National Hockey League, everybody's watching all these players. Yeah. They're watching them develop. They just don't, oh, the draft's over, we don't have, we're not going to worry about them. No, no. You watch all these players, so if you've got all these assets, and this is what the draft's all about building assets down the road when these younger players sort of start to develop that's when teams are going to be knocking on your door and that's when you can you know what we're going to have to move some of our assets for players for today yeah so what you're bodies. seeing there guys uh, just for for our viewers who aren't, aren't I saw sure, a lot of paperwork is what i yeah, saw so I, there's a computer at the table and you enter the pick into the registry and if you pull up uh, the the list of uh, approved players in your computer and they're not in the registry you have to go up here and you're seeing members of the league and members of the Carolina staff um, go through the process of making sure that the player can be approved for the draft process. How would a player not be on the approved list at this point? Uh, so if he's from Europe, it could be age factor. If he's aged out in a certain category, it could also be the same over here. Uh, but sometimes he's just a miss. I'm, I'm going to be, but the, 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 I think they're going to talk about it, maybe. Yeah, it sounds like something's coming soon. We hope so, because the Hurricanes have certainly used up all three what minutes. What we would and then usually some. do ahead of time in Florida is if we didn't see a guy that was listed, Reader, we'd send it to the registry ahead of time. But there's a danger in that because that uh. pops up across the board <laughs> on all the team's uh, uh, computers in the system. So now they know Ooh, somebody's listed somebody. Yeah. Does he try and sneak him in at the last minute? So you sneak him in, but <laughs> yeah. I can tell you, the league hates this part right here. We have a trade to announce. And I guess Carolina back. has traded this pick, which is number 71 overall, to San Jose for picks number 94 and 100. San Jose is now on the clock. That's the MO right there. That is the MO for the it Carolina is. Hurricanes. The trade back, add more darts to the board. They've been doing that ever since this new regime took over. Eric Polsky got Don Waddell there. And I think that's the situation for Carolina. They're happy to do it. Value, value, ahead, San Jose. value is the name of the game in Carolina. So the, oh, the here USHL, we go, let's listen. Brandon Svoboda. All right, Brandon Svoboda. So you can see Sharks Carolina used all their time. Brandon they flipped Svoboda that pick uh, with the San Jose Sharks for 94 and 100. And 
There is the Next shark selection, selection right the there. the Arizona Coyotes. A bit of a rig, this guy. I mean, a 6'3", 210 pounds, right shot, center. Playing for a good Youngstown team. 16 goals this year. That had him amongst the top 10 of USHL rookies. And, of course, you've got some uh, bloodlines to consider there. But... Uh, yeah, right, right shot center at six foot three though. Yeah, I mean you, you the right shot centers you, you can't have it's like a right shot defense I, mean, I think you see more left shot North. centers and left shot D than you do right and at six foot three no There's lots of time for growth for some Svoboda Swedish league Next order make selection. his way over to Boston Trade University. Trade so there'll be some developmental time there for him Arizona making a quick pick here at 72 Noel Nord Jason left winger out of the Swedish Junior League yeah, good size forward, average skill set overall, guys. Skating has got room to improve. He needs a little bit more. He's, he's okay out of the gate, but in open ice, he needs to uh, transport it a little bit quicker than he does in open ice. Uh, in North America, I'm a little bit concerned just about his style of play, but, you know, on the power play, he goes to net front, he battles, uh, takes away the eyes of the goaltender. He's excited here, you know, he, you see where he is, right? He's in, he's around the crease a lot of these goals and great celebration. So, uh, he's got yeah. some work to do, but it's going to take time. At the U18s, you couldn't move this guy. He stood in front of the net for Sweden on the power play. He was big, he was strong, he plays a little bit of an edge. And you know what, when you're 200 pounds at 18 years old, it, it, it means that, you know what, you do have some room to improve your quickness and your speed. He's a big guy at 6'2", 200 pounds. I think he's a great pick and a great player. You can lean on for a few more years, and he can develop that little quick twitch muscles to get his feet moving a little faster. But you stand in front of the net, he's got great hand-eye coordination. He scored some big goals for Sweden. Yeah, you got to be willing to go to the hard areas, for sure. There's absolutely no doubt about that. And it, was, it was a silver medal for Sweden, too, as well. They lost the U.S. in the final there, and he was a big part of that. Speaking of Sweden, Noah. Dover Nielsen, Jason, left winger from Fralunda. I would have thought at the beginning of the year that he would have gone higher than this. He went through some ebbs and flows. This is a fantastic story, guys, and I have to share it with you. He lost his mother to cancer and shared that with us at the Combine. He's been uh, playing with a heavy heart and dealing with a lot of things off the ice. So good on him to uh, plow through uh, outside distraction and uh, Skill guy, ahead, off the flank, shooter, St. good St. speed. Blues, when this kid's on, he pushes Winter the play. Burns. You know what's interesting there? His brother Liam, also a Detroit pick. So now the two brothers can hang out together. And I know Noah has sought some uh, help outside of the game in terms of uh, mental performance. And I think that's a perfect idea for Detroit to get him paired up with his brother Liam. Now the two of them can be Detroit Red Wings. Obviously, they've had a lot of success there in Sweden. But again, the story that you talk about, JB, is uh, is hugely important and at the forefront here today. Yeah, older brother was a fifth-round pick by the Red Wings back in 2021. At 74 to St. Louis reader, Quentin Burns. Quentin Burns is from Smith's Falls, Ontario, the home of great goaltender Billy Smith, and he plays in Kingston in the OHL, which is pretty much just around the corner if you want to be in the backyard from Smith's Falls. A big defenseman, six foot one, 180 pounds. He is physical. He is extremely tough along the boards. He is a no-nonsense defenseman that is very, very difficult to play against. He can, he's a tremendous skater. Moves him extremely well. He's got a very good first pass. But if you want a tough guy to play against, that depth defenseman on any team for St. Louis, he fits into St. Louis's style of play. Uh, is you know what it's going to be a tough night to play against me and that's that's Quentin Burns in a nutshell at 75 Vancouver Hunter Brustovich defenseman out of Kitchener we got to take a quick time out here from the NHL draft round number two through seven day two here in Nashville we'll be right back the 2023 upper deck NHL draft is here Scan the QR code on your screen to collect a piece of history with this free digital card set featuring some of your favorite The game is always more exciting when you go top shelf. Improbable Plays, Sunday, 5 Eastern on NHL Network. Welcome back to the 2023 Upper Deck NHL Draft, rounds two through seven. Round two officially in the books, about to be halfway through. Round number three, we took a commercial break. Four picks had gone by, but Mike Kelly, I know you wanted to go back to the defenseman, defenseman, excuse me, from Kitchener, Hunter Brustevich. Absolutely. I really like this pick here for the uh, 
the Vancouver Canucks at 75. This is a player that I had on my list at 36, so obviously I like it. Uh, Rasmus Sandina has an NHL comp, thinks the game exceptionally well, excellent brain. Uh, not a guy that tries to force plays, he's not overly flashy, but really, really smart player, reads the game well. Playmaking there is a strength of his as well. Um, development, uh, defense, but certainly not a weakness by any stretch of the imagination. So the fact that I add him at 36 and he goes where he did in the draft, like that pick a lot. All right, we like that analysis a lot. Thank you very much. Mike, at 77, reader, Matthew Cataford, a center from Halifax, out of the queue. Real nice, smooth skating player. 31 goals in 68 games for the Halifax Moosehead from Chateauguay, Quebec, just outside of Montreal. Excellent hockey sense for Cataport. He sees the ice extremely well. He's got gifted hands. He moves the puck extremely well. He competes as well as anybody. At 5'11 and 190, sometimes you've got to go get pucks in areas that you may not want to go. You're going to take a whack here and there. He does that, and he not only does that, but he comes out usually on the other side with the puck, such as this play here. He uses his smarts and plays to be able to create space for himself. He's not going to bully you over. He's not going to and a push out of the way with his size, but he uses uh, he uses his brain to usually make the plays that develop into offensive plays. A really really nice pick for Vegas. 190 pounds, fellas. His fitness, like he's uh, he's a load. He's he's 5'11", but he's a load. So if it, it, in part of the notes that if he doesn't get doesn't work out in hockey, he's going to open a gym. That's usually a pretty good indication. Yeah, he was jacked at the combine. <laughs> he was absolutely ripped. I could see it. Gym rat. Waiting on Nashville here. To see what they do at number 79 as time winds down. It sounds like something may be happening. They're over at Central Registry right now, so Nashville potentially trading back here. I can make a comment on the, the Cohen Zymer pick if you want out of uh, Prince yeah. George. Give the kid some uh, some love here. A goal score. I mean, 41 goals in 68 games. Uh, he leans shooter more than playmaker in my estimation. Uh, you know, highly dangerous on the power play, Sammy. He's a big body at uh, 210 pounds. Not not real tall, like he's six foot, but quick release. He's one of those guys that catch and release in tight areas. It's like on his stick, off his stick. So um, there, there's the scouting the report from John Williams, who's been in the game forever. Yep. Luke Williams is dad, longtime scout and Sault Marie reader. Remember old Luker? Yes. Um, but anyways, yeah, naturally strong. He's he's got to work on his skating, his explosiveness, and his separation. And he's been addressing that. He's working with quantum speed out of Edmonton. That's something that he's working on right now. He recognizes that self awareness. I love that when kids have that, recognizing that and uh, trying to address it here in the off season. All right, we have an announcement. Let's go to the we podium. We have a trade to announce. Nashville has traded the current pick number 79 to Dallas for a third and sixth round pick in the 2024 draft which means Dallas is now on the clock. So Nashville trading away pick number 79 to the Dallas Stars in exchange. They'll get a third and a sixth round pick coming up in next year's draft. So Dallas, you are officially on the clock. This is what uh, is an example of the flexibility that Nashville built up last year by acquiring a lot of draft capital for here. And when you start to run out of names on your list, uh, I know we're only in the third round, but if they start to project out their list and they don't love guys in a certain slot, they're going to continue to kick that can down the road and continue to add capital to their draft uh, board for next year. It's funny you say that because they came into this one. Barry Trotz, here, I'm going to turn this thing over to you. This is David Poyle. Here's 13 picks. Go get them. Like, that's a lot of picks to have in one draft, so you kick a few of them down the road. All right, Good speaking Dallas. of trading away things, we just saw a trade Tomorrow away picks, but we saw a trade earlier with Gardner. Josh Bailey, Elliott to Chicago. What more do Dallas we know about that? There is a development, Gardner Jameson. Ottawa, so earlier Ontario, today, Josh Ontario. Bailey was put on unconditional waivers by the Blackhawks for purposes of a buyout. He stays on the them for 24 hours till Calgary noon Eastern plays. tomorrow. Assuming he clears, he will then become an unrestricted free agent and a buyout by the, by the Chicago team. So Bailey could become a UFA in 24 hours. The first... Uh, the last day to put people on waivers for a buyout is tomorrow. If you have a no-move clause, they don't have to put you on waivers. They just tell you. But if you don't have one, you have to be put on waivers first, Jameson. Elliot, appreciate the insights. We'll keep you Go ahead, Calgary. posted all day long Calgary down there on the draft floor. Gardner At 79, Senior. Dallas from taking Brad Gardner, Sam. From uh, Penticton has some bloodlines. Dad Columbia played over 300 Hockey games in the National Hockey League. League. Yeah, yeah, the Ottawa 67s have a great program and a coach in Dave Cameron who really prepares his players for National Arizona Hockey Coyotes. League and playing pro. But at 6'1", 184, it sure didn't look like that for him last year. He had a 20 pounds over last summer, so he comes in 
to this season as a guy who can handle the physicality a little bit more, who can assert himself physically and give himself more uh, power and balance to be able to take pucks to the net. So if you're looking at a guy here, yeah, 19 goals, pretty good, 39 points uh, all told, but this is a guy too is a bit of a project pick moving forward you have to like the fact that he's addressed the size issue will continue to do so this offseason jason at number arizona. 80 calgary arizona, idar calgary suniev select. left winger out of penticton yeah it's calgary. easy to identify this kid's element uh you know his, his read and, and react game like in the, the offensive zone and uh, identifying the how the, the play is developing off the rush here offense from this guy uh you know he's him and uh, uh bradley nadeau there were lighting it up in at the tier two level in the bc hockey league this year in penticton and he loves to score goals. He's a big body. He's uh, he's a, he's deceptive off the rush. Another one of those guys that doesn't look like he's moving that fast, but he's just hard to knock off the puck. He's uh, he's got a big rear end reader. I don't know how else to play. You know those guys are just hard to get around Tough to, to move. Defend against. It's like you know what? Nothing wrong with that. You can stand in front of the net. You yeah. can defend. You can play both ends of the rink. When you are big and you're tough to move, and you're six foot two, one ninety two, at eighteen Mary. years old. Um, you get your feet moving, you get some speed going, you're going to be tough to play. Hard to defend, yeah, it's just, it just is what it is. Big rear end, flattering in the sport of hockey. It is. Nowhere else. Yeah. It's got one more. <laughs> You'll get slapped on the streets if you use it anywhere else. <laughs> uh, it's... How about at number 81, Tanner Lutke, a centerman out of Lincoln in the USHL, sixth among all USHL skaters and goals this past season with 32. He is committed to the University of Nebraska, Omaha. At 82, Zach Nairing from the Winnipeg Jets. Go ahead, Nashville. As we wait on How Zach, as he celebrates quite possibly the biggest moment of his life and Dylan certainly the most important the moment of his hockey Hockey's. career at this point. Looking for him in the crowd as he makes his way down to the draft floor the next and will celebrate with a new sweater Seattle and practice. meeting some new teammates, so to speak, in the front office there in Winnipeg. At 83, Dylan McKinnon, the National Predators. And you heard a uh, loud roar in this building. We are in Nashville, Sam. Ahead, Dylan McKinnon. Yeah, 6'2", 190 Seattle pounds, right shot defenseman. Again, that added value Aiden we talked about, but this is a tough guy. This is a guy who knows that he has to play with physicality. Three fighting Seattle majors this year, which is tough to Caden accumulate Price in the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League. League. It's tough to accumulate anywhere Next in the Canadian Hockey League, League these days. But Ducks. in his rookie season, just a couple of points, and you wondered what he was going to be, what type of defenseman was he going to be. But clearly has identified as that complimentary guy, tough to play against, good in front of his own net, will work the corners for you and uh, just be that nasty piece of business for you. All right, how about a defenseman, Caden Price, here at 84 to Seattle? Tim. A, a little bit similar, but with more offensive upside. Ahead, now, Price I'm doesn't play with the, the same nastiness that McKinnon does, and I think Price got Cedar caught off. in between being a point-producing guy or a puck-moving guy, and I think he leans Cedar more, off. or Sasha I would project him more as that puck-moving guy. To think that he's going to be a point-producer is probably a bit of a stretch, but again, you can make a lot of money in this game, and you can have a very successful career being that complimentary guy and understanding your role, playing it to a T. We're seeing the depth of defensemen now where teams are running sometimes eight defensemen into the playoffs, you know, due to injuries and how tough the game is. So if you can just play your role, move pucks quickly and efficiently, play that mistake-free hockey and defend the net, you can play a long time in the National Hockey League. And, and Eagle. Seattle finally got their price, and it's not Go just anyway, it's a C. Price. I like that. Nice. <laughs> From the in the USHL. Well, the Harry, Ducks did take Price. a uh, defenseman. They took a right winger, Sam, Igor Sidorov. Yeah, well, he's been through the draft once United already, but States this guy is slick. He's got great offensive skills. Next 76 points this year. He sniped 40 times. Flyers. Did Sidorov, and you have a, a guy here who was playing with the Saskatoon Blades, a really good program, and I don't know. I, I love the fact that he can that he can really score goals, but it's the hands, it's the uh, creativity that he has in his game. He's slick, got a little bit of swag to him, and I like that. Anytime you got a little bit of swag, you're going down, you've been through the draft once, I think that's a guy who's looking to prove himself beyond, but there's no doubt he belongs here. Igor looking at his phone, looking for maybe a direction of where to go. He needs Google Maps right now. Somebody give this kid some direction. There we go. Uh, this is Gavin McCarthy making his way down to the draft floor. 86 from the Buffalo Sabres here, defenseman out of Muskegon in the USHL. His brother Case was a fourth-round pick in 2019, Russia, the NHL Yeager, draft by New Zabrani. Jersey. He is committed to Boston University. Flyers so the younger Yeager, brother, Gavin, maybe Zabrani some bragging rights over Thanksgiving dinner because he goes round three, his older brother going in round four. Arizona Coyotes. 
He's got some bite to his game, this kid, McCarthy. Like, he pushes back. He's not shy about it. And you know, they, they they talk about him being mobile and skilled. You know, he produces, uh, I call it two-way offense. Uh, secondary scoring might be a little bit of a reach for me as a pro, but um, I like his effort. I like that he closes in on guys and, and he punishes people. So Gavin McCarthy Go at 86. Arizona. Igor Zagravit from Dinamo 87 Vadim to the Philadelphia Flyers. Coyotes have selected Vadim Moros. Uh, from at 88, Vadim Moros out of Russia going to the Next Arizona Coyotes, Jason. To the so we're going to we're getting a run of Russian prospects going to the Arizona Coyotes and uh, not just one or two like this is might be three. I might be losing track. I might be up to four Sammy uh, as we get through this, but three for sure. And it's interesting, isn't it? Because it's almost become a strategy here where they feel like they might have been able to trump some other teams with yeah. better viewings, yeah. better intel on players. And again, ahead, when you've got that many prospects, Peter, let's just take a swing. Absolutely. Right? Vancouver Absolutely. selects from the Seattle Thunderbirds, Sawyer Manayo. Sawyer Manayo. Vancouver out of Canucks Seattle. Selected oh, he's Sawyer kind of staying Manaya local out on the West Seattle Coast. The Vancouver Rocky Canucks at number 89. The next Sneaky defenseman here. Uh, and, and a solid guy who can just play that efficient style of game. Again, he's not going to give you a ton of offense, but a guy that will play tough. He gets a lot of tough matchups. Really good stick and body position. I was talking to Matt Odette earlier this year about this guy. We got talking about Miatovic a little bit, Grayson Sachin a little bit, and I felt pretty strongly about those players going high in the draft. And he said to me, Sam, don't sleep on this guy. This guy, Minio, he's been a really reliable source for me on the back end. So, again, he gets all the tough matchups. He's more of that complimentary type of player. Vancouver Canucks going the way of D. That's something that they need to build up in their system. And Minio with those additional looks here at the Memorial Cup playing with Seattle. Are this is we're starting to get to the point guys where I'm starting to see more need starting to get selected yeah, right yeah. we're going we're going 3D now for, uh, for Vancouver uh, you're starting to see that point in the draft where you can that tap on the shoulder might be happening is that standard every year by the time we get maybe halfway through round three or is it different every year based on the draft class that we have Jason I think it depends on the depth and, and certainly it also depends on your own internal cycle of where you are as an organization but uh, historically, if I had to pinpoint it, I'd say midway through the third round is when we start to kind of look at a group of names and start to fill some needs at times. Well, how about this, JB? At what point does it get turned over to the to the regional guys, the regional scouts who might have start to have more say as opposed to maybe your crossover guys or your head scouts? At what point in the draft do we start to see that? Well, I don't know how everybody else does it, but uh, every guy on my staff has as much say as the next guy. I don't care if you're a crossover guy or regional guy. We all get a piece of the pie there. So, yeah, nice. Um, but as we get later, to your point, as we get later, um, if we're down to like three guys and maybe uh, when I was working for Dale Town, he wants to know just a little bit more, we'll call the guy up to the head of the table and say, hey, listen, just, just you know, tell Dale again why we love this guy. And, and that's a fair uh, discussion to have. Right. You got to have everybody involved, fellas. They travel away from their families. They're on the road all the time. They miss a lot of things. They all got to feel like they're included all the time. Love that. Kyle scouts, Dubas scouts, and the so scouts have their own family of scouts from other teams because they all travel a lot of times to the same areas. Regional guys, they get they'll see more of their scouting brethren than sometimes they do with their own families, especially in big tournaments around the holidays, around Christmas. You're going to so World true. Junior. You're going to U18s. There's different times of the year where the scouts are out. So yes, absolutely. If, if, if they're, I don't know a team that doesn't give respect like that to all their, all their scouts. Kyle Dubas and the Pittsburgh Penguins on the clock and using much of that clock. So we'll use this chance to take a quick commercial break. Much more from the NHL draft day number two. He Welcome back to the 2023 Upper Deck NHL Draft, rounds two through seven. We are in round three, halfway through. And Well, you didn't miss anything during the commercial break. We saw the Pittsburgh Penguins on the clock. Well, they used all their time and then traded that pick. It was pick number 90. It now goes to the New York Rangers. So they swapped pick 90 for 91. Maybe they needed just three more minutes, but also included in that is a seventh round pick in 2024. So here we go. The New York Rangers making their pick at number 90, and it's Drew Fortescue. National Team Development Program, United States. Loud cheers for Drew Fortescue. He's, I don't know, coming from a big family or whatnot, Sam, but that might be the loudest ovation we've had so far on day two here inside Bridgestone Arena. Gold medalist with the under-18 program. You're looking at a D who shoots left at 6'1", 180 pounds. Uh, I think who I was talking to earlier in this year. You know who it was? 
Um, it was JP, John Paul Morosi said, I love this Fortescue guy. So that's what I was talking to earlier in the year. Um, and has a lot of love for him. But uh, looking at that gold medal winning performance for the U.S. under 18 team at the World yeah, Championships, they win it 3-2 in overtime. He liked the New York Islanders and Devon Taves growing up, but that's not going to be the uh, option for him now as he gets the opportunity to play for the New York Rangers, a hated rival of the New York Islanders. Now you can see the uh, scout speak here on Drew Fortescue uh, rounded out his two-way game this year. We go on and on. And the finish there it is. A lot of family members in attendance. The next certainly this is a big day for them. Rounds. rounds two through seven on day number two. Getting to hear their name called and their dreams fulfilled. So Pittsburgh drafting back to number 91. As you see Drew Fortescue putting on his New York Rangers sweater. How about number 90, 91 here? The Pittsburgh Penguins reader. How about Penny Niemi? Real nice, smooth skating defenseman, 6'2", 175. Another depth player, played in the Finland at the World Championship, played five games, had one assist. Kind of a jack of all uh, uh, trades defender type thing. Played a little bit in the league up, uh, which is the men's top league uh, with Karpat in Finland. Left shot defenseman. States Probably one of the league. better defensive Center prospects in Finland, and Finland is usually known for having top prospects. You see, it's a year that they struggled a little bit with some other prospects on the back end. Pinyemi moves the puck well, skates well, Next defends well, uh, can play the power Marcos. play, can play in the penalty kill, played in all situations. Uh, just a, a good depth defenseman, and I think that's probably what he's going to be projected as with the Penguins. All right, the Bruins finally coming out of hibernation here at the 2023 draft, right? Don Sweeney and company taking a nap on day number one why not and then here they are their first selection coming in round number three and it's Christopher Pelosi at number 92. Go ahead Chicago. What do you guys make of the big picture Boston Bruins here and what they're trying to accomplish? Of course they've been busy they're up against the cap trying to make some moves trying to shed some cap space. Where is this team heading because they're coming off a historic season that we've never seen before last year. It seems like it's the back nine with this group the next now you're talking about uh, Marshan and Bergeron Krejci and you're thinking about having a, a, a record setting year in the regular season. Of course, they bow out in round number one and it's uh, you're trying to hold on to the past, but you also have to kind of move towards the future here a little bit. So I think that's the, the stage that Boston is now. You know, that window to win, it's very short in the National Hockey League. You got to take advantage of it when you can. I love the moves Don Sweeney made last year, the Orlov Hathaway type things, but now it's time to start transitioning back to getting to be a bit younger. They're, they're walking a fine line right now, yeah. fellas. I mean, they're right on that cusp of uh, are we or aren't we? And and if we aren't, what do we have coming through the pipeline? Because uh, it might be some NHL type trades, hockey trades that will have to reestablish the roster in short order. The pipelines, um, you know, on the come see right now. Christopher Pelosi, a native of New Jersey, committed to Quinnipiac. The Bobcats coming off their first national championship in their history. And what a year and what a run it was for Rand Pecknall and those Bobcats. So at number 93, uh, Yuri Felkman to the Chicago Blackhawks. And you talk about a team, maybe the opposite of the Boston Bruins, right? That window closing for Boston. Chicago, it, it, we can only go up from here. And with the pick of Connor Bedard, number one overall, but you guys liked what they did on day number one, didn't you? Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, Chicago is, is really starting to take flight here, and that's exactly what Kyle Davidson wanted to do. Listen, if you get the general manager's job, you get it for good reason. Obviously, upper management has the faith in this guy, but aside from that, when you take over a team, if you're given the license to strip it down and to fill it exactly the way you want, everything falls upon you. So when you look at day one now, Bedard and Moore, two centers working down the middle of the ice. Moore obviously is a speedster. Connor Bedard, what haven't we heard about him? Then you start with Gahan here early in round two to address the goaltending of the future. He's go on to the wing and look for a little scoring and Misiak and Lardis and then back to center ice. So lots of picks left here still for the Chicago Blackhawks. Lots of speed in those picks too, guys. Like Bedard, obviously we know the skill, but boy, did they add some speed. Moore, Lardis, I mean, these are elusive forwards. Who's going to get him the puck? Coming out of their own zone. Didn't see any defensemen on there. Like that, are, are, do you think Go maybe Carolina. Chicago, that's what we're looking at from Carolina's moving yeah. forward here? To address the needs, yeah, for that depth, yep. the depth defenseman. 
All right, so it took a while, but with 30 seconds left, Jaden Perron, Jayden Perron going States to the Carolina Hurricanes. Next order of selection belongs to the Philadelphia Flyers. So, United States Hockey League, the Chicago Steel, um, you know, they just keep uh, pumping out players. You know, they've, they've done a heck of a job there. And here's another offensive guy. He's uh, he's slight, like he's not uh, he's not a big, uh, strong guy, but. Offense is the upside, no question. Um, he's going to be a guy, though. Here's my fear. When we start to take swings at guys in the middle of the draft, um, he's Ed a guy that might have to play in your top six, if you know what I mean. Knights, like He's Denver a guy Berkey. that needs primary ice, so he's going to have to put in the work because he's got to compete to move up the lineup to establish Denver his identity. From London, you have to like the point Ontario production. Hockey. The kid from Winnipeg who ends up going to the USHL. Third in USHL with 48 assists for Perron, but a guy who uh, he generated a little bit of first round uh, interest earlier in the year. But again, when you're coming off the Stanley Cup and how hard and heavy it was, and how big players had so much success, probably a step back here as a 5'9, 166 guy. At number 95, Denver Barkey to the Flyers Jason Center from London. So Denver Barkey, uh, 200 foot energy guy, uh, came out of the blocks uh, early at the Ivan Holenka Memorial Tournament last August, and we really thought that he was going to be that pest who could be, you know, better than a point a game. But uh, he kind of lulled in the middle of the season, and then took off again. So you're seeing him here. He's ahead, he's elusive, right? Quick to small areas. Uh, these guys are hard to defend. Uh, guys like Gavin Brindley, Denver Barkey, same type of style. Uh, Travis Konechny in Philly. This is like Travis Konechny light uh, on projection. That concludes. So the Vegas third here round. with the last pick in round like number three at NHL number 96. It's R2 Karki, Jason, a defenseman out of the Finnish Junior League. So we're getting into that area here. I, you know, this is a, this is a, a project in, in, in my estimation. He's a he's a late 04 December birthday. Um, he did produce offense, but I don't know, guys. There's just a, there's something. There's a lot of projection here. He's got good size. At times he walks the offensive blue line, makes plays. Then there's other times as a detail in all three zones really fall off. Uh, the Finnish Junior League at the U-20 level, uh, those points are good. Don't get me wrong. I've, you know, we've drafted kids out of there before, uh, but he's going to have to go to another level. The good news is when you draft a guy like this, go he's ahead, on the clock for like four years before you really from have to get him over here. All right, from projections yeah. to concrete news, back and down to the draft floor with Elliot Freeman. Elliot, Elliot, what do we got? More moves. The Chicago Connor Blackhawks Smith. continue to do things after a very Next quiet day yesterday for everyone. The Blackhawks have acquired Corey Perry from the Tampa Bay Lightning for a seventh round pick in 2024. You assume that when a, this kind of move happens right during the draft, right before free agency, that there will be an extension coming, working on it. We'll see what the Blackhawks and Perry are working on. Elliot, we appreciate it. So Corey Good Perry Columbus. going to Chicago from in exchange for a seventh show, round pick Stone, at 97. Andrew Connor Stratton. Smith, defenseman out of Peterborough Columbus and looking Andrew good, Stratton looking sharp in his Youngstown suit as United his States dream League. becomes fulfilled. We'll take a time out here order, so as we are well underway in round number four here, day two of the NHL draft. 2023 Upper Deck NHL Draft is here. Scan the QR code on your screen to collect a piece of history with this free digital card set featuring some of your favorite number one draft picks. Get your Montreal. Draft Welcome back to the 2023 Upper Deck NHL Draft, rounds two through seven. We are a couple of picks into round number four here, and while we are away at commercial break, a couple of names going off the board. Uh, Jason, including including Andrew Strathman. Uh, this kid's got to have high hockey IQ because he said if hockey doesn't work out, he wants to be a surgeon. Whoa. Okay. Well, good for him. That's uh, that's <laughs> Go ahead, easy. <laughs> that's that's out of my snack bracket, as you can tell, as I stumble over my own words here. But anyways, the, he leans he leans a two-way transitional DM projection, used in all situations at the USHL level, and produce some offense. You know, he's got some bump to his game. Uh, not tall, compact, strong. Um, I like that he's aggressive with the puck. He makes quick decisions, and uh, you know he's got a chance. You know he's got he's got skill. He moves well. He's competitive. This is a nice pick in the middle of the draft. 
How about Reader at number 99, the Hawks, Alex Ferran, center from Sudbury. Very interesting story with Ferran. He's six foot three, a right shot center. He's had two years in the OHL, and he's been traded twice, and both have been huge trades. Once he was drafted by Hamilton at 14th overall, but he was traded to Peterborough for Mason McTavish. Hamilton goes on to win the 2022 OHL championship. Then he's in Peterborough. He gets traded to his hometown Sudbury. Hopefully Sudbury doesn't trade the hometown kid. And that trade is for Chase Stillman. And guess who wins the OHL championship? The Peterborough Peets win the OHL championship. In, so Alex has been in two big trades, but he's a big guy. He had 18 goals, 67 games, big physical guy. Skates decently enough, but again, he's a project at that size at this age. Paul Knubel getting selected here at 103 to the Flyers Center from Fargo in the USHL. Congrats to him. He was passed over in the draft last year's dad. Of course, we know Mike Knubel played over 1,000 NHL games. Vancouver 104, Patrick the Thomas Nebraska, to the Omaha, Washington Ty Capitals. Mueller. Vancouver selects Ty Mueller from University of Nebraska, Omaha. All right, Ty Mueller Next order out of the New University of Nebraska, Omaha, going to the Vancouver Canucks at 105. Well, some interesting backtracking here. Let's look at the Montreal pick at 101, Florian Jack guy. And that name, as soon as you see it, you know what that's all about. Arbor's brother, of course. But this guy's a forward. He plays with a tough physical edge ahead, like his brother. has got some undercover skill. Still has a way St. to go Louis to develop his game. Select. But I think any Jacob time you get Stencil. into an organization with your brother, that comfortability and Jacob it takes away some of the unexpected so you can start to hit the ball run uh, hit the ground running and Next I like that about this pick with Jack all right we're gonna hit the ground we're gonna hit the draft floor here EJ and Jack here down there with a very special guest guys we certainly are Patrick Marlowe uh, in the house uh, to hang out with us for a little bit uh, how have you been enjoying Nashville sir uh, out of 10 let's say <laughs> oh it's, it's been great I don't know I'll probably like a Eight or nine. I mean, this is all, that's a good score. Yeah, it's uh, it's fun to kind of see what's going on behind the scenes as opposed to being on the ice. So it's a learning curve for myself. Many years back, go ahead, you were second overall draft pick. I think it was from 98, 97. Yeah, 97. There you go. Right, even further. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to give you an extra yeah, year I know, there. I know. But uh, like, so you were experienced that as as a young man. Next door. And now here you are in a different role. How is it? How has it looked to you now at this stage of your life? Um, it takes you back to when you were drafted and uh, you kind of put yourselves in, in these guys position again and, and the family and the, all the excitement the, you know having your family here friends um, to celebrate all the work that they these kids have been putting in all their lives and all the sacrifices the parents have been making and, and siblings so it's it's uh, it's fun to, to see the, the emotion and uh, these players uh, get drafted. Yeah, we've had some really good family reactions uh, here <laughs> on day two. Loud, proud, as they should From be. Victoria and that's BCHL. really, you know, what it's all about Point is Stanley. watching dreams come true. But Ottawa you talk about selects. the different Point perspective Stanley. you have From now, Victoria, obviously, as opposed Columbia to way Hockey back. Uh, were you 17 when you got Next drafted? Yeah, yeah wow. I mean, that is yeah. young. I mean, Connor Bedard, right, first overall, yeah. is 17, 17. And you, you forget how young that is until you start chatting with a 17-year-old. Yeah. And you're like, oh, yeah, you're, like, so <laughs> young. Yeah. Uh, but you talk about seeing this from a different perspective perspective like what kinds of things are you learning kind of behind the scenes um just kind of how the the rundown how they get to the uh the players that they're going to pick and uh um how they can cross you know start crossing names yeah. off and, and seeing what's from Kingston, next available and uh what our needs are as a, as a club and things like that so it's pretty interesting yeah it's funny because the guy that was in that picture with you uh tim burke He's still at that table and still uh, an integral part of the San Jose Sharks when it comes to uh, drafting young players. Yeah, yeah, it's great to, to have him. And um, I'm trying to, you know, learn as much as I can from all the, the staff yeah. that they have. And it's a great staff. What do you remember most about your draft day? Like, was there any funny stories or interesting things that happened maybe behind the scenes in the lead up to the actual moment? Um, geez, um, I don't know if any funny stories or anything like that, but I... I, what I remember most is how, how busy you get right after. It's a, it's a whirlwind. Uh, once your name's called, then you're swept off you're media. Being the, yeah, you're, you're, it's a whirlwind. But then, uh, what I, I enjoyed was hearing like all my teammates and buddies getting drafted yep. at, later on. So, uh, and then being able to go out and celebrate with friends and family after was probably the biggest thing. And you know, it's, again, you're connected to Joe Thornton, who was drafted first. You were drafted second. Inevitably, you would become teammates and be teammates for quite a while. What were your memories of your relationship with Joe at that time? Did you have one? Yeah, so we had played uh, under 18 together uh -huh. and uh, became friends, obviously, through there. And then 
when you're going through the draft, you get to go to these, you know, little pod things where you go to the um, Stanley Cup finals. finals. Yeah. So you, you spend time with the with the with these guys. I spent time with Joe and yeah. a lot of the other top top picks uh, that year, and you get to become friends and and get to know Who each other. Who knew you were going to yeah. be teammates? Yeah. Years I know. Later. It's life and he is would so have funny. a huge beard. <laughs> yeah, a famous, fa iconic, really yeah. That's right. iconic, iconic. Uh, well, we are in Nashville, and it, you know Nashville has grown so Boy, much Nashville. over yeah. the last couple wow. of decades. It's really been crazy to I'm see. But you can't Joey be in Willis. Nashville and not talk about country Nashville music or karaoke. Patrick Marlowe, you don't strike me as a karaoke guy. But if you were to get on stage, like if you're forced to perform a karaoke song, what song would you select? Oh boy, I. It's the hard-hitting some, some, journalism right country, now. Something country, I think. Okay. Something well, country. that would be the first smart decision yeah. in this town, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know. I'll, maybe I'll go uh, something Garth Brooks, Friends in the Place. Oh, yeah, the great, oh, there great, it is. There great, there it is. great, there it is. great choice. Yeah, because you know what? Then you just get the crowd involved, then you can leave. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> they, won't, like, they, won't, yeah they won't be able to hear me say that. No, right. but you know why that's a great choice? Because it's a country music icon, and it is a song that everyone loves. So as long as you that's get up right. and you do a song everyone loves, they don't care how you sound, because they're going to be singing along exactly. with you. Exactly. But uh, thanks for playing along with my hard-hitting journalism, <laughs> Patrick. Uh, I really appreciate it. Thanks for stopping yeah, by. And enjoy the rest of the day. And good luck with everything. Yeah, Thank you, guys. All right. Appreciate it. All right, uh, we are going to take a quick time out here on NHL Network, but our draft coverage continues on the other side. We are in round four. Stick around. Welcome back to the 2023 Upper Deck NHL Draft, rounds two through seven, two, three in the books. We are past the halfway point here of round number four. While we are away, Sam, a couple of names, familiar names going off the board here. As we show you the board, uh, who are some of these guys and what, what should we know about them? 108, Ottawa finally jumps into the game there. Bain Pettinger is the uh, advisor for Hoyt Stanley, who will go to Cornell next year. 6'3, 191 pound right shot defense, and at 38 points in 58 games. But the interesting element to him is we talked about that Bedard group with uh, Matthew Wood and, and Zach Benson and Andrew Crystal. Well, this is the fifth member of that group. They needed someone to play defense, so Stanley <laughs> was that guy. Uh, the next guy I'm looking at is Buffalo, Ethan Miedema. So interesting story there is he's playing with the Windsor Spitfires. They're having a great year. They're starting to load up. And as part of the load up, they trade for Shane Wright. So Miedema moves to Kingston, moves a little bit closer to home. Really tough adjustment for him at that point. Not only for leaving friends, was having a, he had a really good setup in Windsor. But now it's the pressure of being traded for Shane Wright. It's the pressure of going to a new place that's a, a rebuilding place in Kingston. The two elements about this guy, he, he is a rig. Like this guy is a rig. And he could shoot the puck, shoot it extremely hard. We'll see if he can kind of take his game forward here with Kingston while getting some more opportunities in a team where he doesn't have to play in the middle six. Joey Willis is another guy from Saginaw. Nashville Predators take him. Rookie, uh, all rookie team in the uh, OHL this year. Playing for the Saginaw Spirit, the interesting element to him. He'll get a chance to play in the Memorial Cup next year. A rarity that the Memorial Cup is played in the U.S. market. Saginaw is deserving of that. Remember this name, Michael Misa. He's the latest of the exceptional players. We'll see him not next year, but the year after. And then you've got Jaden Lipinski. Got to know him a little bit. Hockey gives blood ambassador at Calgary Flames. Big guy, moves the puck well. For the uh, Vancouver Giants, Barkley Panetta, they're out there uh, looking at Lankow's kid in Arizona and they keep getting their eyes on this Lipinski and they're like Lipinski yeah pretty good so they ended up listing him and of course he ends up having a good year with the Vancouver Giants another big body for the Calgary Flames our most recent name off the board at 114 Luca Pinelli to the Columbus Blue Jackets while we wait on news here from Nashville we send it back downstairs to Jackie EJ and a <clears throat> Stanley Cup champion guys Yes, congratulations. Uh, continue to be in order for yes. one George McPhee, uh, fresh off the Vegas Golden Knights and their Stanley Cup victory. Congratulations again. Thank you. Uh, roughly how much sleep do you think you've gotten <laughs> since uh, we saw Mark Stone and everybody else lifting that cup high in the sky? It's been better lately. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the first four or five days were pretty wild. As they should be, yeah. as they should Absolutely. be. You know, George, you know, we talked a little bit on the on the ice that night afterwards. You've had a little time now to have it sink in, but you played, you're a great college player. You played in the NHL. You've been in management for a long time. 
It's a lifetime. The trades and now here you are, Stanley Cup champion. Has it sunk in yet that your name is going to be on that Stanley Cup? Um, this pick it, you know, it seems to catch you every day. Because you get up to thinking Tampa about the draft Bay, and everything else, and then you sit back and go, Chicago's you won the Stanley Cup a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> and even after our parade, uh, one of the cup keepers Tampa just said, uh, players have this from 1 to 5 Tampa tomorrow. Bay, I can bring it over to your house for dinner if you want. And he did. And I'm driving down the street, and they're in the driveway washing the beer off it before they bring it into our house. Said, There's the Stanley Cup. Yeah. And uh, my family was all there, and uh, I just ordered a bunch Go of pizzas, ahead, and we're looking at all the names Tampa on the trophy and everything World else, and the, the, the teams Jason I used to Shockley. like when I was a kid and Tampa used to follow. And then I had sort of a moment where I had to walk away and go outside. And because uh, it was just, Next it got emotional. It, the family Seattle. didn't know about it. I just went outside and then came back in because you're thinking about your parents and your brothers and all your buddies. It's an emotional thing. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm glad you yeah. got to take that moment to yourself sometimes yeah. to just really actually take it in and, and ahead, recognize Seattle. exactly, you know, what you've accomplished and Seattle what it took to get there. You, when you, you almost, you almost don't, don't get a chance to take it. it, it hits you. Seattle yeah. so like, I need to go for a walk here so nobody sees what I'm about to do here. Um, yeah. Wow. Well, because when it when the when the wind becomes official on the ice, right? It's like immediately there's there's so much happening and it's like sensory overload, I'm sure, exactly. for the entire organization. Yeah. And then all of the celebrations that follow and eventually you get that moment which you, it sounds like you yeah, had at home a good one. where you go, "Oh, wow. <laughs> this is really feeling real now." Yeah. When you look back on the journey to get to that moment, you know, what do you what was the most rewarding part of the journey to the top of that mountain in the last year or so or from year one I, I guess would it say, doesn't matter. I guess so however you want to answer yeah. it yeah um, f for me it's it's uh, sort of the uplift that you, that you give to the community and uh, as I said before I wish we had done it in the first year because Las Vegas needed it yeah. that year yeah um, but we we kept putting good teams on the ice and then to see uh, the way that Las Vegas has responded uh, has been amazing. Ahead, and we are Kirk. Vegas born. Go We're ahead, not a Detroit. team that relocated or anything like Detroit that. Yeah. And I remember Academy. when we first went to Larry Vegas, Keenan. there was a lot of civic pride Detroit that this is our first Keenan professional team. Yeah. And then we ended up putting good teams on the ice, and the support Next was incredible. And uh, yeah, I guess, you know, when we turned the corner at that parade, because I wasn't sure what it was going to be like. Turned the corner, and there were hundreds of thousands of people on the street. Wow. Like, Holy smokes! Yeah. This is amazing. This is a moment. Yeah, it was amazing to watch uh, just yeah. on television and being there. I commented to Jackie a couple times. I mean, the building is state of the art. The whole thing, right from the top all the way Go down. Ahead, you guys Los have done an unbelievable Angeles. job, and so obviously the product on the school, ice is great. Hampton, I want to ask you just because we've talked about like again, you've, you have all these different like connections Hampton, in hockey your whole life. You probably got a million texts and calls from people's congratulations. Oh, yeah. One or two that stood out for you that you were like, wow, that's really cool. Well, it, I, I think it's, uh, you just hear from so many people, um, a lot that you haven't talked to in years yeah. and they somehow find you. Yeah. And it's, uh, every day is kind of a new adventure. It's uh -huh. like, holy smokes, this is a kid that lived uh, behind us uh, a block away yeah. that uh, I haven't talked to in 30 years, you know? And so, um, Vancouver it is amazing how nice Matthew everybody's Perkins. been. Yeah. Yeah. You hope it lasts States more than a couple of weeks, but yeah. uh, Next order it's, of uh, to it's just an incredible journey that's really, really hard to explain. Yeah. Um, but it's it's nice to sort of be in the club. Yeah. Oh, I bet it is. Yeah. Um, you know, we're running out of time with you, but I do want to ask you really quickly just about uh, locking up Ivan Barbashev. This yeah. happened yesterday uh, before the first round got underway. Uh, watching Barbie uh, during that run through the playoffs and then in, in the cup final. <laughs> when were you like, all right, we got to figure out a way to keep this guy around in <laughs> Vegas for a little longer? Yeah, well, Go we ahead, we up. were talking to Aiden Hill Soda for a while Gallia, and to Barbie, Alex trying to get it done. Um, I'm Alex not sure Chernick. what we could do because, um, the limitations. You know, yeah, yeah. Next and uh, uh, we're delighted uh, that, uh, you know, it looks like we're there on Aiden and Barbie's done. Um, you know, unfortunately, it cost us uh, a Riley Smith, who is yeah. uh, just a heck of a hockey player, an outstanding human being. Unfortunately, the salaries are going up and the cap isn't. Yeah. And you have to make really tough decisions. We never thought we'd have to do that uh, with Riley, which is a shame. Uh, we're going to miss him. But uh, 
you know, the organization comes first, the individual comes a close second. We've said that a number of times, yeah. and you just have to make the hard decisions and yeah. keep going. And you've proven to be an organization that can make those hard decisions uh, for the better in the long run yeah. uh, for the team and for Riley Smith. Hey. Reach the mountaintop with That's you guys right. as sure an original did. six misfit. So he goes out yeah. uh, on a high note. Uh, uh, exactly. Right. George, yeah. thank you so much for the Enjoy time. Yeah. Really yeah. appreciate it. Congratulations. Enjoy guys. your summer. You have earned yeah. it. Yeah, it starts <laughs> next week. <laughs> <laughs> Countdown's on. Uh, enjoy you. the rest of the draft. Yeah. Jamo, we'll go back yeah. to you. All right, Jackie, EJ, and, and George, thank you very much. Yeah, that is the ultimate goal is to win the Stanley Cup. Uh, for these youngsters today, this is the first step. It's getting Jersey. drafted, and while they were interviewing George McPhee, a couple of those dreams came true. Jason, familiar with a couple of these names, Nermi, Pinelli, and Chagabay. Yeah, so let's go to Jesse Nermi, New York Islander pick. Uh, his element is speed, guys. He's got the, he brings a speed element, plays the game both quick and fast. Uh, the best work that he provides for the group is off the rush. Like uh, His impact is off the rush. He backs opponents off. Chip and chase might be the best option for him, but he gets it deep and he's got relentless energy. He really does. He's finishing a little bit around the net here in some of these clips. This is, these are bonus clips. Really, it's what happened to get to this stage here on his zone entries. Having said all that, he's got average to average plus puck skill overall, so he's, uh, he's going to be more of an energy provider on projection at the NHL level as a pro if he arrives. Uh, when we get into Luca Pinelli from the Ottawa 67s, again, we're getting into a guy at 5'9", 170 pounds, uh, Sammy. He had a nice, listen, Ottawa had a great year, a really good year. Um, he's a skill guy, right? Like He's a skill forward, does his best work on the power play uh, for me. Uh, excellent hands. Again, I keep coming back to it, but it's a skill set in this draft set or draft class. Real quick catch and release. Like he's got really good mitts. I love his hands. Yeah, like he can he can really handle the puck. Like that's that's his element. Of course, his brother Francisco an LA pick. Right, and again, guys like this that are smaller reader. You, you and I keep going back because they play their weak side flank. They open up the ice. It's in front of them the whole time. You know, they're not getting. Uh, accosted from a back checker, you know, coming late behind them. So they always know what's going on in front of them. It's a crafty little maneuver that these uh, smaller players have, you know, learned how to adapt. Uh, the last guy I want to go to is uh, in, from Green Bay. Uh, well, really, yeah, Warwood yeah. High School as well in, in Minnesota there, from Jason the Um His numbers at the high school level were insane. 29 games played, uh, 92 points. Uh, when he went to Green Bay, 16 points in 27. He's, uh, he's not a big body, and his skating has got to come. All right, he, he absolutely needs to go to another level with his agility, his explosiveness, and his open ice separation. What you can't teach is what he can do with the puck. His handles are elite. He's got a, a really sneaky release, playmaker as well. So the hands are there, the offensive brain is there, the feet have to come. All right, Reader, I know you want to talk about uh, Cam Squires to the Devils at 122, but we need to give a shout out to Yuha Yatkala, a goaltender from Finland. This, this kid was passed over in the last three entry drafts. So the fourth time's the charm. Congratulations to him. Reader, Cam Squires. Oh, Squires plays in Cape Britain in the QMJHL. He's from Charlottetown, PEI. 30 goals in 67 games. That pretty much doubles what he did the year before. He had 16 in 64. Really found himself a beautiful skater, smooth playmaker, sees, sees the ice extremely well from the right side. He's an excellent player in transition. When you're a winger in transition game, you really need to understand where you're going because it's the defense of the centers. A lot of times the guy's breaking up plays, and as a winger, you got to be prepared to go the other way. He has that. His high ceiling IQ is really something the Devils are going to sit, and you can wait for this young guy to develop. But when you see play, talk about he's got a good IQ, he's a smart player, that's usually something that it's like, well, you know, we can wait for this young guy to develop. At six feet, he's 165 pounds, lots of room to grow in this body but um I, li I like this pick by the devils a nice player who sees the ice extremely well all right jason how about at 123 luca canyoni a defenseman for the sharks this is why you go to games right here so in regular season when you go watch luca play his skill set comes to the forefront two-way transitional defenseman go active ahead, on Austin. the offensive blue line makes plays joins the From rush USA off the puck a little bit of risk reward in regular season program. he's a plus player portland's a good a good team Come playoff time, guys. You go back. This is why you do it. Harder games, okay? Harder to defend. Not as much ice to go on offense to play to your element. His detail falls off, so his warts come to the surface more in playoffs. So I know the offense is there, but the off-the-puck detail and the defensive commitment reader at the hardest time of the year, 
that has to go to another level. But you know what? For him, the only undrafted player to play in the CHL, NHL top prospects game. So Mike Johnson, the head coach, general manager in Portland, goes to watch him skate a half hour later. He signs this guy. When you get a player like that for free after going undrafted in the WHL Bantam draft, and all of a sudden he's a draft pick, that is huge for your organization. And of Go course, ahead, we're here picking late here. You're going to see some things where where you're From seeing US some deficiencies. But hey, program, you're, you've got the chip in the chair to get in the game. I see we see Beckett Hendrickson here making his way down to the draft the floor, drafted at 124 team, by the Boston Bruins. Program. We know his dad, Darby. What do we know about Beckett? Yeah, it's and nice. He's he's been through it, uh, you know, before. Having been around the game for such a long time, played in the BioSteel All-American game. And you see it, 6'2", 174 pounds. I mean, this guy has the opportunity to do some things down low, worked along the boards. Point production, decent. Minnetonka, Minnesota guy. And anytime you come from NHL bloodlines, I think you're given the benefit of the doubt for Hendrickson. Nice to see him go to Boston. At 125, Aaron Minetian. Dallas Stars, Mike Kelly, a defenseman out of the U.S. Development Program. Well done, Dallas Stars. Uh, had this guy projected at 47th overall. So to get him at 125, I think is a great thing. He's got a lot of get up and go in his game. You take a look at his trend line this season. Finished strong relative to uh, other prospects as well. I think a Brandstrom, Gerard kind of type game. He's under six feet tall. Uh, but man, he's got energy. He can skate. I think a little bit of less is more in his game as a development will will benefit him. Um, tries to do a little little bit uh, too much sometimes at time, but he can absolutely go hits as well. I really like this pick for the Dallas Stars being able to get him at this spot in the draft. He's a guy who ahead, appreciates the play of a Drew Doughty, a Kale McCarr, a Bowen yeah, Byron, but I don't think he's necessarily that guy. Having said that, he Carolina does provide offense. He is a London Knights pick. Be interesting to see what his future Yara holds for Aram Manidian. Uh, but a guy I got to spend some Next time with over the course of this year, sitting down with him Florida. in Plymouth uh, at the under-18 program, getting a chance to to know him. He's um, a gold medal winner, so you have to like that about him. Anytime you have winning pedigree, I think that's something that can be really appreciated because it's difficult to win. He did it with the U.S., the 3-2 overtime win at the under-18s over Sweden in overtime. If anybody wants to take the time to, uh, Go to Google Florida. his last five minutes Paris, in the gold medal Sweden, game against Sweden, Albert, game on the line, Britain. blocking shots Florida with his face Albert, the one time. Vickman, I mean, he put it on the line. Farfari Tells you something about a kid Sweden. when your gold medal's on the line and you're doing all those little things. It's important. Final selection in the fourth round belongs to All right, to so Montreal. a couple of picks going by here. Stanislav Yarovoy to the Carolina Hurricanes and then Albert Wickman here for the Florida Panthers. That's 126, 127. One more pick coming up here by the Habs to round out round number four. How, how would you assess the pace this year, Reader, compared to years past? I mean, last year, we barely had time to breathe in round two and three. And here we are, and it seems like some teams are taking a little bit more time this time around. Uh, and that was kind of expected, though, because we always talked about how strong this group is. Uh, the 05 group, an extremely strong group, some late 04s. And it, when you have ahead, better players or you think they're going to be better they players down the road, it might take you a little more time Miller. to discuss that. Teams may want to bump Montreal up, maybe take a flyer on some. And see, we've seen just a few From trades, Quebec, but um, we're Martin. way ahead of the pace when we started with Sammy when you were still in the <laughs> COVID time. When you were, <laughs> oh my I don't know gosh, what you room you were in. I, I was in the penalty long box back at Sportsnet. Yeah. Oh my gosh. They fed you, the, you uh, were asking for food the whole day. We were, right. It was an eight-hour eight draft. <laughs> they slipped a little water and bread on the set at one of the commercial <laughs> breaks, so I was pretty happy to have that. Those are memories that we'll never <laughs> forget. <laughs> the NHL day two draft. All right, the last pick in round number four by the Habs was Quentin Miller. He's a goaltender from the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League. He led the queue and all rookie goaltenders in save percentage this past year in 9-11, a minimum of 15 games played. So that concludes round ahead, number man. four. As we look ahead to round number five, some notable fifth-round draft picks Broadway among active Yo, players. Jamie Benn, Brennan Gallagher, Zach Hyman, John Klingberg, Connor Hellebuck, and Kirill the Thrill Kaprizov. So the Anaheim Ducks Next up first here in round number Sharks. five. And there is their pick, Rodwin Dionisio at 129. That guy in Dionisio benefited from a trade moving from Niagara to London and it, or to Windsor rather, ended up uh, with 15 goals this year. So a 6'2, 207 pound left shot defenseman from Newark, New Jersey. That had him eight, those 15 goals in terms of uh, OHL defensemen. So again, you're looking at a guy, and it's interesting. 
you know, when you get down here, JB, uh, how much does size play a factor? If you're looking at a couple of different guys and you're thinking, all right, well, we might need a, a puck mover, we might Go need ahead, this Sharks. guy. Uh, how much does size play a factor when you get to, to this, Sweden, this defense part of the draft? Well, it, it absolutely starts to play into it. Uh, and it, But again, I can't discount the fact it depends on the cycle Sweden. your team's in, you know, you know yeah. what your depth Next chart looks like. You know, if you have a new coach at the American League level, the NHL level, maybe a new general manager, there's a lot of things, a lot of things in motion, but all things being equal, guys, uh, size still matters. If you can, uh, at this point in the draft, for me, can't skate, can't think, can't play. That's how I start to look at it, okay? So okay. you better be able to give me something there because some of your other elite elements aren't as good as your uh, your counterparts at this stage, but you better be able to move and get there because it's just too fast. That's what my hockey resume would say. If we throw up the board of my crib, can't think, can't skate, can't play, can't do anything. Uh, the Sharks can do something. And at 130, they select Axel Landin. He's a defenseman from HV71 Junior over in the Swedish Junior League. His stats for the past yeah, season, 44 sharp. games played. He scored 10 goals, 6 assists, no, for 16 said, points. You can see his uh, prospect board right Chicago, there. We had him ranked at 148, Marcel, so coming in right around Marcel. there at 130. Oh, I like this one. This one's easy. Marcel Marcel for the Chicago Blackhawks here at 131. I can just comment on Axel Landin. You know, he, he was trending up for me at the end of the year, you know, at the uh, under 18 Worlds. Uh, he's just a two-way kind of shutdown guy. Uh, deployed at even strength and on the final kill. There he bodied up, you know, take the gap. I like that. This is a low-risk uh, uh, guy at the, the right part of the draft. I mean, he doesn't have elite the offensive uh, skill set, but he's a gamer. He plays hard, he competes, he's part of their leadership group, and, you know, he's a role guy, and there's nothing to matter with that. On three different occasions, part of the leadership group, so I think that speaks volumes. You get to the national team, you're getting the cream of the crop, and you still get to wear a letter. He did so at the Go World ahead, Junior A Challenge, State. the Holenka, and, of course, there at the World Under 18s. Has so there ever the been a player to make the NHL Eric with the Poolcamp. same first and last name? Do we know that? Well, we saw an Ivan 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 at a Bathurst, uh, Acadie Bathurst, a couple of years ago. He has not made the NHL yet, but we're looking, looking for him. How about Eric Polkamp here? A defenseman from Cedar Rapids in the USHL. He was passed over in the 2022 NHL draft, so congratulations to him. Uh, he was just named the 2022-23 USHL Defenseman of the Year. Eric Polkamp to the Sharks. You know what I find interesting, and also at this point, if I'm if I'm part of a scouting staff or a general manager, I'm starting to think about guys that might have been through the draft a couple ahead, of times. Montreal. You might have more physical From maturity, more mental maturity. You might see those Sam late Harris. bloomer type guys. I think there's a little bit Montreal more certainty in this world of From uncertainty of when it comes United to the draft. States, what's the what's the process there, JB? Next when do, do you think Arizona. about that at all? That guys that have been through a couple times before. So I do, and there's there's two ways to attack it though. It depends what their clock is. So okay. if I'm taking a guy who's uh, been passed over, he's still the USHL level he's going to college or he's a freshman who's been passed over he's still going to be in college like so I'm going to have two or three years on those guys still yep. to try and mine out some of their deficiencies I have to take that Go into ahead, account Arizona. a major junior guy of course reader Arizona if I take a guy from uh, your from Peterborough York team back in the day Melker, and he's 19 20 years old I got to sign him Arizona uh, or send him back as an away to you for you know, one more year so Logan, it's different it, it, it all depends as well teams are looking to say you know what I want you to go in and play in my American Hockey League team we're not going to worry about you playing with us right now we want we want you to step up to the, get you to that next level because we see something in you. And that's sometimes where you'll see players being drafted over, you know, the first or second time because it's like we want you in our organization. We want to put you right into our American League team. We want to start developing you. So you, you do see that in the later rounds because teams are afraid that, no, you know what, maybe this, this I've heard that this team is thinking of signing him, inviting him to a rookie camp. Yes. They think of signing him. And it's like, no, we want him because we, we think there's potential there. And even though he's been passed over, they'll be taken. The That's an way. excellent point. Don't discount that. When you get the intel on the floor that somebody's going to sign a kid coming, you know, out of this draft, if he gets passed over or development camp, because, you know, we have relationships with the agents. That's a very good point. Grab them if you like them, own them, yeah. see where it goes. Well, Sam Harris, another guy that was passed over in last year's draft. Uh, he's a left winger from Sioux Falls in the USHL, committed to the University of ahead, Denver. Then you have... Melker Talene for the Arizona Coyotes at 134. You can see the uh, prospect board here on Sam Harris. Uh, we had him at 215. So jumping up a couple of spots there at 133. Carter Sutherland for the Philadelphia Flyers at 135. 
It's been fun to watch things shake down in this draft. And I think back to yesterday, guys, no trades uh, whatsoever, but you're looking at a couple of uh, interesting picks. But coming into day two, I think there was a lot of teams that felt really strongly about what they were going to get in day two. And even as we moved into the fourth round, we're seeing some guys that early on in the draft process would have been projected as top 60 guys. And as it kind of flushes out, then you end up seeing exactly where they go. And of course, that opportunity presents for themselves. But JB, you said it best. When we signed off last night, you said it's like round one and a half. Like everyone kept their picks yesterday. And we knew the first 15 or so picks would be guys that teams would have had on their list in the first round. And so, so I think that's why we boogied through it pretty good. Reader, this guy's on your list, Cameron Allen, uh, Washington Capitals. This guy's a specimen. At the Combine this past year, finished top 10 in 11 different events. Not a real surprise with that. What is the surprise that he dropped to the fifth yeah. round? I expected maybe a late second uh, throughout the third. I really didn't expect that he was going to get through the third round. He was captain of uh, Team Canada, the U18s, great leadership qualities. He was taken third overall in the 2021 OHL draft by Guelph from the Toronto Young Nationals. He was 2021-2022 OHL Rookie of the Year. This, this guy was has been a, a stud of a defenseman since he was about 14 years old. His progression hasn't got to that next level. Some are questioning sometimes the the the, the decision-making under pressure for Cam Allen, and I think at the U18, he struggled a little bit with that. But his leadership abilities, uh, his poise, and his ability with the puck, and his, able, his ability to, to make plays when given time is as good as anybody's out there. And his production definitely dropped at Guelph in the OHL. That's probably why he dropped this far down. I think the Capitals got a real steal here. He's a player that understands where he's going. And because of his great numbers at the combine, he understands how his improvement needs to, where he needs to improve. And he's focused enough that he's going to be able to do that. And I, I really expect that Cam Allen to go much earlier. And I think the Caps got a great pick. He's there. trying to figure out what his identity is for, for Cam because he came in as a 16-year-old and put up points. And I think he felt he was going to be a points guy. That continued through the summer at the Halenka. He was the captain of that team. And now you thought he was off and running as probably the first defenseman off the board if we take you back to last August. Then he struggled to put up points. The Guelph team that had a lot of expectations on it, it struggled too. Cam put a lot of that on himself and realized that he had to kind of take a step back and assess his own game before being um, worrying about what the, what the team was doing. So now I think Cam has figured out what he has to be. And JB, at the CHL-NHL top prospects game, I loved his game. He played simple, a little tiny deception in terms of initiating the breakout. Played with a little physicality in this game, but wasn't so much worried about getting up ice and producing points, realizing that, hey, I'm best suited to kind of be a hang back type of guy and a guy who needs to be tough to play against with some physicality. Let the points come later. Don't even worry about the points. We just saw some uh, some interesting footage there on the St. Louis pick, Paul Fisher from the U.S. National Team Development Program. And this is another one of those glue guys, similar to uh, Axel Landin there from uh, who San Jose selected from Sweden. Uh, two AD on projection. Uh, I don't even know if it's really secondary offense guys that uh, that he's going to produce. Good OHL, feet, sound game Matthew management, low risk with the puck, all real Ottawa good safe selects, attributes. Uh, he takes care of his own first, from keeps it in front of him. You know, Nothing the matter with that. You know what's Next cool about Paul Fisher? So Buffalo. I sat down and interviewed him at the at the program this year, and he's got a like a, like a stuffy, a stuffy named Duke. It's been his good What's luck. What's a stuffy? Charm. Like a stuffed animal? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Named Duke? Named Duke. I like that. And so I think Duke is in the house, if not at, at the hotel for sure. And so Duke's brought him luck here to be picked by St. Louis, 138th overall. Way to All go, right. Duke. Way to go, Fish. Well, Jackie and EJ are in the house as well, and they have a special guest down on the draft floor. Guys? Yeah, we do not have any stuffed animals with us, but we do have <laughs> the executive director of USA Hockey, yeah, Pat Kelleher, uh, joining us here on From the side Seattle, set. How are you? I mean, we've heard a lot Scott of uh, USHL, National Buffalo Team Development Select, Program, Scott, and kids coming out of the USA Hockey. Seattle, yeah, we like hearing Buffalo those names Buffalo. announced. Yeah. Uh, everything has been a great, as usual, great draft for American Next players. Very exciting just for all these players to, to be recognized, selected by these teams, the next step in their hockey career. But as you both know, it, it takes a lot to get these kids where they are. Their families, no their question. youth coaches, the volunteers that help get them up through the ranks to go to the USHL, the North American Hockey League, high school, prep school, and our national team development program. So a very exciting couple days for everybody in our sport. How important of a week is this for you and for the for the you know the the people who are running USA hockey to be here and meeting with all different types of people, including obviously 
the brass from the NHL as well. Yeah, I mean, it's great to celebrate the players first and foremost, yeah. right? That's what everybody's excited about. But to see all these different team representatives, to spend some time with, with Commissioner Bettman, Deputy Commissioner Daly, it's important. I mean, they, yeah. they fortunately are incredible partners to USA Hockey, the league, and all these, yeah. all the 25 U.S.-based clubs. Um, so it's great to be here, thank them for all they do, and continue to make sure we work together to grow the game, make sure we have more players that come up to this level next year. We talk about growing the game, and you know this this becomes an annual tradition for us to have this conversation with you at the NHL draft every year. So give us kind of an update on the overall um, state of USA hockey. We are very fortunate. It's it's in a good state right now. Uh, the state of the union for USA hockey is pretty strong. We have players, uh, player participation, kids back playing back where we were before the pandemic, as far as numbers across the country. Really strong rebound. Um, overall for the game and then for us last year we sent six teams to world championship and picked up five medals three of them gold so internationally to grassroots we feel pretty strong where things are at with USA hockey how about the summer I mean there's always events going on people think oh it's July I'll take a break there's camps there's uh, other uh, events going on what's the summer look like for you and for USA hockey moving forward yeah we turn the, the we turn the clock pretty quick on the next season this summer there's all sorts of player development camps from the boys side or in Buffalo our girls, 16, 17, 18s, they're in uh, Miami of Ohio uh, for their summer programs. We're the World Junior Summer Showcase uh, in, in Plymouth, Plymouth right? our arena. Yeah. And then in August, we have a women's festival with three levels of women's teams, U18, oh. a college team, and then our, our national team all in Lake Placid. And we'll invite Canada in for a couple of uh, three games at the U18, three games at the college ahead, series. So it's a busy summer. It's From great. We get, we get, our, get the touch point with a lot of Yevgeny players over the summer, Volokin. men's and women's. You know, I, I'm reading here too that you've had you've had a record number of female players and coaches in 2022-23. Uh, can you tell us a little bit more about that and and why you think that might be? It, you know, it goes back to probably a long time ago. You go to 1998 yeah. when our women won the first gold medal. We had 20,000 females registered in USA Hockey. When we won the gold medal in 2018 with our women, we had 20,000 eight and underage girls in USA Hockey. Uh -huh. And this past season, we went over 90,000 female members, female players, participants in USA Hockey programs. And now we have that generation that grew up playing, now giving back as coaches, as officials. They're coming back in the game on the female side, and it's great. That helps bring more girls into hockey when they see female role models as coaches and officials as part of our game. So it's really, it's a it's a never-ending cycle, which yeah. is great for us and yeah, great for the girls game. and women can play too. We love the yes. game and I love to see, to read things like that and see the growth uh, on the women's side as well uh, at USA Hockey. Thank you so much for the time, Pat. Enjoy the rest of the draft, whatever you're going to get up to in Nashville. I don't know if you're <laughs> flying out after this or not. I won't make you uh, tell the public any of those plans, yeah. but uh, enjoy the time and yeah. enjoy the and summer. And try to have some fun this summer. We'll do what we can. Thanks. All Right. Thanks, Jackie. All right. Coming up on the other side, we continue with round five of the NHL draft. The uh, New York Islanders getting ready to select at 145. We'll be right back. The 2023 Upper Deck NHL draft is here. Scan the QR code on your screen to collect a piece of history with this free digital card set featuring some of your favorite number one draft picks. Welcome back to the 2023 Upper Deck NHL Draft Rounds 2 through 7 here in Nashville. You can get your free downloadable 2023 Upper Deck NHL Draft set by using the QR code on your screen. Jason, I don't know how familiar you are with the old QR code phenomenon. But you are familiar with some of the names that just went off the board while we were in commercial break. Tell us about those. Well, I want to just uh, zero in on a goaltender that uh, the Norway Buffalo Joe Sabres Sibre selected, Wolves, Scott Ratzlaff. And, and this is a guy that flies under the radar a little bit because he was mostly a backup down the stretch to uh, Team Canada goaltender Thomas Millich, who won gold uh, in Halifax. Ratzlaff's an interesting pick, guys. Uh, 6'1", 175. He's, uh, he's a real compact in the net, like he's tight, like his arms are tight to his body. He leans butterfly uh, athletic to me overall. Quick pads, good low net coverage. That little play there, tight to the post, that's interesting. That's a, that's a hard save, believe it or not, tracking from behind the net. He had a great regular season, didn't get the net in the playoffs. Uh, this is a good pick. I mean, Dustin Wolf went real late to the Calgary Flames a few years ago. This is a, this is a sneaky good pick by the uh, Buffalo Sabres. Raider at 147. I have two young go kids. Ahead, All they do is bicker. <laughs> what about Kevin Bicker here to the Red Wings? Seattle, well, you wouldn't be bickering Thomas with Kevin Millich. because, see, he's the type of guy that would probably Winnipeg pop you in the nose if you started Thomas bickering. Millich. He's a very aggressive, very From physical Seattle, player. He's got West great straight line speed. 
really enjoyed watching Next him play uh, against his peers at the U18 Rangers. level. This guy can absolutely fly. He's got great, great speed. Very physical player. He, and the problem with uh, the, with really evaluating Kevin at, the, at his peer level is that Germany ha has not been strong uh, at, at the U20 level for the last few years. But Vicker's been that one player. When you watch him play, he really steps up. He really stands out watching him play. He, and he uses his speed to his advantage. He can get in hard and four checks. He's not afraid to get physical. I like this pick by the Red Wings. He is a player that's going to need some time to develop to understand the game a little better because sometimes his speed goes a little, his mind goes a little faster than his speed at times. But I, I, every time you watch him play, he's the guy when you're watching Germany internationally, he's like, yes, this is a guy who has really stepped up. In the U-20 league in Mannheim, he had 21 points in 20 games, and that's battling injury throughout the course of the season. But uh, I thought Becker, he was passed over in last year's draft. I thought he might go a little bit earlier, but, uh, you know, Red Wings, Red Wings got a nice pick here. And it doesn't hurt to help bring someone in from Germany. Mo Sider probably knows Kevin yeah, Becker. absolutely. Probably Victor played with Mannheim him a few guys. years Mannheim, back. Yep. And, uh, you know, it would be easy transition. Uh, one guy I just wanted to point out here, doubling down on Sammy's, uh, our conversation we had about uh, older guys a few yeah. minutes ago. Jacob Julian from the London Knights got selected by the Winnipeg Jets. He's a September 2004 birthday. He's one of the older guys here to get selected. Just really coming into his own at the major junior level. Tall, lean, excellent skater. Uh, a little bit of Alex Formanton to him in open ice in terms of his stride. Uh, offense is on the come seat. We'll see. But here's the guy that I'm talking about later on. You have the brain, you have the feet. It gives you a chance. Let's see if we can fit a roll. Same as Justin Gill, Sherbrooke. Same, 93 points this year. Played right. with Gauthier, played with Joshua Roth from Canada's World Junior Team. I like that pick. There we are, going down the older road again. Mike Kelly at 150. Matthew Mania to the LA Kings defenseman from Sudbury. Absolutely. Ahead, Six feet, 190 pounds. He had 38 from points Rogers, in 67 in games this past Hockey. season. As with any player picked James at this point Chester. in the draft, you're looking at a bit of a New project, Jersey right? James and I think Chester. on the high end, some from people Rogers see a High player School, that's still pretty Minnesota. raw, that has more upside, more Next to give potentially. He He's able to make out. incredible plays with the puck. He's got a lot of creativity in his game, likes to get into the rush. Um, thinking the game, the details of the game, those are the things where other scouts are thinking. Uh, not sure what is going to translate to the NHL. From a data profile standpoint, I like the pick at 150, but like I said, not unusual at this point of the draft that you're going to have a project here, and we'll see what the upside ends up being. All right, Mike, thank you very much. At 151, Sam Thomas Millich, a goaltender from Seattle. Man, I'm so happy for this young man. Um, he and Scott Ratzlaff, who was picked 141 by Buffalo, were teammates with the Seattle Thunderbirds. So it's not often you see two goalies from the same team drafted, and here they are drafted in the same spot. It was Milic who had the net for the most of the year and through the playoffs for sure, and won Canada a gold medal. Everywhere he goes, he puts up numbers. Under 17, save percentage is 925. Under 18, it's up at 932. Goes to the World Juniors. The save percentage again, up at 928. Seattle Thunderbirds. Everywhere he goes, you have to take that into consideration at some point. But as a six-foot goaltender, it's going to be a steep, steep road to climb. To climb. Having said that, he's been told that his whole life. At every turn, he's answered the bell. Good for you, Thomas Milic. Take advantage of the opportunity given to you. All right, we had Chase Cheslock go to the New Jersey Devils at 154. A defenseman out of Rogers High School. Uh, he was a finalist for the 2023 Minnesota Mr. Hockey Award. So Chase Cheslock going to the Devils at 154. All right, back down to the uh, draft floor here with Jackie Nije. Thank you so much, Jameson. Uh, we're thrilled to be joined by uh, Flyers General Manager Danny Briere. Uh, how has it been so far, sir? <laughs> it's been exciting, uh, <laughs> the, especially yesterday. Um, it, it was a blast. There's a lot of action. Uh, maybe not for you guys so much because there's no trades, but uh, there's a lot going on. And um, you know, we're we're obviously probably like all GMs that make selections in the first round we're, we're ahead, really happy Thomas. you got to be used to that phrase From I can't Sweden, believe he was still there yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what we all that's, use it right that's the phrase <laughs> but uh, Matt by Mitchkoff I mean yeah. we, I was we Cold talked about it prior Sweden. to the to the draft yesterday I was very fascinated in terms of how things were going to play out he's obviously a very very highly skilled player yeah the world is in a, in a kind of an odd place right now geopolitically um, you guys very stealth you got him in you talked to him yeah. what sold you on making him the pick because I love it yeah. for your organization. Yeah, he came in and we had a small group where we first met with him and uh, 
Uh, when he left, we were blown away by how much he wanted to be a flyer, how much he, he told us he wanted to play in the NHL, ahead, um, yeah. how his dream of winning a Stanley Cup From was. And we, we right. said, we got to meet him again and, and include the whole organization to get everybody on board. And again, he came back for a second interview, and it was the same thing. He just blew all our scouts away, everybody that was involved in a bigger group. Um, and we left, and we felt comfortable that if he fell at seven, and, and there's still no guarantee no, no that he guarantee. would be there. Yeah. Um, but when we, we saw that he was falling, and he's available at seven. We felt the upside was just something we couldn't miss. Sounds like the second impression was as good uh, as the uh, first one. It certainly uh, was. How about after the selection? I'm sure as you're getting close to it, you're just kind of like, okay, just a couple <laughs> more picks. And then you draft him. You know, have you talked to him after? What was yeah. his? What was the the conversation for I, you guys? After I don't know if you guys original. were able to see on the stage or so there's a camera, but his uh, his smile was just felt like genuine. He was so yeah. happy to be a flyer. That's what he kept telling us. So. Uh, we feel good at the moment. Time will tell. Um, you know, we think we have a special player, and that's kind of what we're uh, we're looking for in, in the Flyers organization, uh, game changers. So, um, like I said, time will tell what, what happens. You know, it, it's funny. We had uh, Patrick Marlowe up here a few minutes ago, and, and I did, you know, he was a, a high draft pick. You were someone drafted, I believe it was 24th Correct. by the Phoenix Coyotes in your draft year. Uh, I'd just always like to get your impressions. I mean, you were such a young person at that time. You get, you know, whizzed around. You were an unbelievable prospect. You had so many points. Some people say, well, is he going to be big enough to play? Final you were plenty big enough to play, but what's it Arizona. like now, a couple of decades later, to be in this role and to watch these young kids again? Yeah, it's uh, it's you know the the toughest part is not to find really the talent, but to find the the passion in in the kids. Who has the passion to go above and beyond to become a, a, a an NHL player? Uh, that's probably the toughest part for our our scouts when you're projecting five, six, seven years ahead. Yeah. Yeah. How do you how do you measure intangible things like that that you, you don't necessarily yeah. see on the score because you had yeah, it's that because you had that there was probably a lot of discussions about you as a young player he's got all the points he's got a lot of skill yeah. this is a hard league he's not the biggest guy does he have that inside to do yeah. it and you probably had to prove that to those players to those yeah. people who drafted you and then throughout your career i i, I think it's scouting that's why seeing that the live views on the players are so important because the video you can see different things but the live viewing you can see behind the play uh, his interaction on the bench with the coaches with his teammates uh, you know when the game is over uh, in warm-up um, so you try to pick up on those little things that sometimes can be hints and the type of person they are uh, also and, but it, it's not an easy thing to do yeah body language after a good shift versus after a bad shift etc we just showed uh, some of the selections on the screen there and we saw Cole Knubel uh, on yeah. that list. So you have a, a special connection uh, to yeah. that player, I would imagine. Uh, care to elaborate at all? Yeah, and it's pretty cool because we uh, we saw Cole around the rink growing up. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's got to feel a little weird there, for you. So, no, yeah. it's pretty cool. It's, uh, we're, we're excited to uh, to bring Cole and the, the Knubel family. I asked him to get his old relics back, uh, find him somewhere uh, in the basement. So we're, we're excited to uh, to have the chance to have him on our team. And you can see the, the bloodlines you also took Oliver Bonk in the first round, a defenseman, I believe it was 22nd overall. I mean, let's face it, we've seen this play out now time and time again. There's something to it that when you've had those connections at the highest level, you have a little bit of an advantage. Yeah, I, I, well, I hope so. I, I remember myself the first time I got to an NHL training camp in, in an NHL dressing room. It's, it's overwhelming yeah. if you've never been there before. Um, I know I was stage fright for, for the first little bit. Um, sometimes when you have those guys that have been around, um, you've seen them run around the, the dressing room, yeah. there may be a little uh, a little Go easier ahead, transition Arizona. for them, we hope. Um, at the end Selects of the day, it's uh, you know down the road, Samuel three, four, Bauer. five years down the road, what happens. Arizona yeah. Well, the preparation Selects for Samuel yesterday Bauer and then for today as well, it, it is immense what you guys do to prepare for this. Really, Next you prepare all year long. What have you Carolina. learned through the process of getting ready for your first draft as the GM? Of the as the GM, um, what have I learned? Um, that it goes a lot faster when you're the GM. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it might seem I slow from the outside. Yeah, that's um, right. Things were coming fast, hard and furious uh, in that moment, right around the seventh pick. There's a lot of discussion, so it, it was fun. Probably the closest I've been to uh, playing a game, so it was yeah. it was pretty exciting. Oh, cool. Was there a lot of phone calls from other teams as you got close? Because obviously he was a talented Enjoy player. People Carolina. don't know necessarily that you're Carolina going in that direction. Did you handle a few calls at that moment? Definitely. Yeah, there's there's some some talk.
talks with different teams at the moment, with different things going on. So it's uh, it's pretty good rush. Yeah. Last one for you, and I'll make it quick because they're wrapping me. Uh, we're in Nashville. Go-to karaoke song for Danny Briere would be. Oh my God, um, I didn't didn't even think of that. Um, <laughs> I, I, I'm blanking. <laughs> That, that's what yeah. Carrie Price. Poor <laughs> Carrie Price. We love you, Carrie. Uh, Sorry. Danny, thank you for the Thanks, time. Guys. We really appreciate it. All right, Jameson, back to you. All right, Jack, thank you very much. Yeah, things happening fast and furious here. Round five in the books. We're already three picks into round number six. But, Reader, I know you wanted to go back to round number five. Pick 148 to Seattle, Caden Hamill. Easy pick for Seattle. He plays in Everett of the Western Hockey League. Right shot defenseman, six foot one, 173 pounds, excellent skater. And the key to when you're reading scouting reports, you watch a player play. Does he compete? And every scout and the reports, and you talk to guys, see this kid competes. He, he can play defense. He can play up in the offensive game. 26 points in 67 games. Uh, this is a an aggressive defender who engages in the game. And when you talk about compete and engagement. Those are two words that most scouts or most GMs would like to hear about a young player. A nice pick by Seattle, kind of looking in their in their backyard over and Pretty cool. He's traded uh, for Ol Olin Zellweger, who went back the other way to Kamloops, and the return for Zellweger was crazy. I think it was 14, 14 pieces. 14 pieces. And so Hamill was obviously a big part of that. When you identify someone in a trade like that, it means you really like him. And of course, Seattle now feeling the same Go way. Ahead, All right, three picks now into round six. Jason, last off the board, 163, Cold Teamer Brown. Muhanov. Okay, so when I start to, to explain Brown. to viewers that okay, you start to see trends and you start to get a feel for different teams and what they're going to do, Next this is a classic Carolina selection. So they go to Russia, they draft a five foot nine, 180 pound uh, Russian player, skill guy. So first off, quick and fast. Okay, so boom, he can skate. He cheats the zone. He's got a bunch of things that he's got to clean up. There's no question. But offensively, he wants the puck and he knows what to do with it when he gets it on his stick. So. Uh, you know, when this this year, this, the scouts be fluid and effortless. So, you know, I guess I could debate that in their war room, but this isn't the category to do it. But I'd say more quick than fast and open ice. Ahead, Cheats it, but he's got an offensive element that projects as a possibility, Philip guys, Erickson. and that gives us a chance later Montreal in the draft. The Devils at 164, Cole Brown. He's a left winger Sweet. out of Hamilton in the O. He closed the Next OHL season selection. this past year. Pretty strong, 12 points Arizona. in the final 12 games. How heavily is that weight when it comes to as we approach the draft? We have a strong first half versus a strong post. Does that have any kind of weight difference, do you think? Well, Easton Cowan won in the first round to the uh, Toronto Maple Leafs at 28th overall. And, and you know, it, it was a marathon the season, and he finished very, very strong. But then the flip side of it is, and this is what I mean, I'm torn to give you a straight, a straight good answer. Nick Lardis had a heck of a back half, and he went later than I think he probably expected he would as well. Yep. So, um, I don't know. It just depends on the appetite of the team. Philip Erickson, our Go latest ahead, pick Arizona. at 165. The Habs making that selection. We got to take a quick time out here. Our draft coverage of day number two from Nashville rolls on. Welcome back to the 2023 Upper Deck NHL Draft rounds two through seven. We are flying through round number six. Jason, 166, Carson Musser. So this is an interesting one, guys. Big body goaltender, 6'4", 212 pounds. The backup to uh, Trey Augustine at the U.S. National Team Development Program. At the Worlds at the end of the year, they kind of at the beginning when they were running away with games, they split the games and actually literally split a couple of games, like halfway through the game type of thing, which is always uncomfortable for a goalie, but they did. Listen, he is pretty compact. He's athletic. He moves well laterally. He didn't get big moments this year, but I like the risk. I'm okay with it. I think the mechanics are sound. He's going to CC. Um, I don't know if he's going right in next year. A year in the USHL might happen ahead of that time. Um, I think Madison has his rights, if I'm not mistaken. I'm doing this off the top of my head, but that's a good risk. It's a big goalie later in the draft. His timeline's three, four years. He's athletic. I like that. At 171, we see Aiden Celebrini to the Vancouver Canucks. We better get used to that name, yes. right? Next year? I think they're setting the table for maybe doing a little friendship walk there, trying to attract the brother next year, Macklin Celebrini, but he won't be down on this board. There'll be a one in front of his name, but it won't be with the 72 beside it, I can tell you that. Macklin Celebrini arguably would have been a first-round pick reader this year. 
Yeah, as and, an under, and, and, and could be top five pick. Yeah, like, like he was, he's that he was that good, or is that good right yeah. now? Wow. He, he, yeah. So, um, I was just thinking, well, if Vancouver's going to have a chance at Macklin celebrating. <laughs> <just, laughs> they better dump half their they're, players. They're going to have a tough year. They're going to have a tough year. They're going to have a tough time yeah. getting number one overall. That's Matthew for next Mayich year. Mayich before ahead, that at 170 to the St. Louis Blues, 172. Ryan McPherson to the Flyers. School, Who's up now? Sean Colhane. Buffalo selects Sean Cohane from Dexter School, Massachusetts. All right, the Dexter School in Massachusetts. Sean Cohane, the Buffalo Sabres, certainly an up-and-coming youth movement there in Buffalo and starting to knock on the door. And one would assume that next year, I mean, between oh, yeah. Ottawa, Detroit, and Buffalo, they're getting close. One of them, one of them's got to go. One of them's got to go. Which but one? Who's leaving, though? Who's leaving? That, that, well, we said, the, we said Boston issue. last year, yeah. and look up. how that played out. That's right. Can't move up unless someone doesn't get in. Well, and, uh, and we did have some changes this year. Boston, Toronto, Tampa, and then you think of New Jersey, the Rangers on the other side, the Islanders, they're not going to go away. Like, it yeah, is it's, tough. It is wow, tough. Wow, is it, it is tough. very tough. And you, and you want to try to t crack the top three for Buffalo yeah. or Ottawa or Detroit, but you just said Tampa, Florida, Toronto. And Boston. all of those teams are all staying yeah. in Boston. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Oh, and, that, and then to, to crack the top, you know, to be in the playoffs, it's... Um, they are knocking on the door, which is great to see. Yeah, and, and they they can they keep doing it, and it's uh, go ahead, it, it will it will happen sooner Ottawa, than later. But it's, it's go time, and yeah, I know yes. they're getting anxious in Buffalo. I mean, it's been a, a lengthy run. It's been a North American sports Ottawa, record type of run Hockey without the playoffs, and so uh, now now it's time to get going. But National you're right, like Predators. you know, is Pittsburgh really going to go away here? Is Washington going to go away? I think those teams are sort of on the back nine, but. Doesn't mean they're going away either. I mean, Pittsburgh is right on the doorstep at the end. At 174, Cooper Foster to the Pittsburgh Penguins Center from Ottawa in Go the ahead, OHL. Nashville. I love this. He walked around his house in hockey skates at age Austin two. Roost. Parents put tape Nashville on the skates uh, just Roost. for his safety. And I guess maybe to not damage the, the hardwood floors, <laughs> right? Wow. Next yeah, That's Ottawa. dedication from the parents right there to get the kid on skates literally. Inside that's, the house. That's a good two. program, that Ottawa program. I mean, you know, James Boyd, he does it. He does an unbelievable job. job. Dave Cameron, you know, I spent some time, a lot of time in the National Hockey League. They they do a good job producing players. And I love this pick here at 174, Austin Roos, Stacy's son, who is uh, an assistant general manager with the Tampa Bay Lightning. I, I ran into him on the floor yesterday. I said, is Austin going here? He goes, ah, ah, I don't know. It was about as calm a dad as they've ever seen. Now, he's been through the process before. Um, Go ahead, but Calgary. really kind of casually Calgary said, that's up to him now. I've junior. done my part. <laughs> I've paid the bills. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I've paid the bills. Go get him, kid. Your turn now. Well, dad works for the Lightning, but his favorite team now, the Nashville Predators. Mike Kelly, what more do we know about Roost? Yeah, well, as mentioned, he's a year older, right? So he's an 4 born, but had a breakout season for himself in Everett. As uh, in the number one center role, he's 5'10", 175 pounds. Guy that's good on the four check. He's improved his two-way game. So again, you're taking an overager. At this point of the draft, you're hoping you're seeing another year on top of that to kind of compound a little bit of a breakout that he had this past season. If you get that, you continue to progress. Go ahead, you never uh, know, right? But as a 175 pick here, um, it, it's, a, it's a good guy to make a bet on. All right, Mike, appreciate it. 176, Igor Igorov for the Flames here. 177, that pick just coming in from the Islanders. From USA Hockey National Team Development Program. There you go, Zachary Schultz of the Next order of selection belongs U.S. The Development Program. We just heard from Pat Kelleher, the uh, director of USA Hockey, and uh, certainly it just seems like year after year we're seeing more of those kids go uh, in round one, two, three, and throughout this NHL draft. Yeah, it's nice to see that because I think typically the U.S. under-18 program was known for its higher-end picks, but now they're ex starting to extend ahead, the Schultz Rangers. into the Fishers, the Fortescues, the Mininians, those Dylan types of Rolbeck. players. And so when you play Oshawa on that program, the, the best thing about that is the exposure you're getting. You're going to get the exposure of scouts coming to see the top-end players, but you're also going to get tons of exposure in the international events, the four nations, the five nations, the world under 18s, which they typically go into with the best team. So it's nice to see that when you're playing a little bit down in the lineup and you get multiple looks in high leverage situations, you might not have had that opportunity playing in another program or playing in the USHL, but when you're playing with the prominent national team, the multiple looks and high leverage situations mean a lot. So my takeaway on this kid, Schultz, is that he's one of those guys absolutely plays to an identity, even at the U.S. National Team program. So this is a perfect Lou Lamorello, New York Islander type pick. Two-way D, 
knows exactly what he is. I'm a low risk guy. I get places on time. I get places ahead of time. I move the puck and then I wait for it to come back my way. Like I'm not going to, I'm not going to be an extra layer off the rush. I'm not going to get caught up ice. You know, I'm going to eat some pucks on the penalty kill. That kind of thing. Like, you know, Guys who know what they are, reader, can have long careers. And they as a national team yeah. development program, they're kind of, they're, they're not, I hate to say peg, but Campus they're put in situations, say you're going to be our Warren offensive Clark. defenseman, you're going to be our defensive yeah. defenseman, Campus you're going to be our penalty Warren killing Warren defenseman, Clark. you're going to be in a From position and you need to be the best Manitoba at that. And that's exactly league. what happens. A player like Schultz gets in Next there. We don't maybe not see the offensive skill. Seattle. From a Schultz, you may not see some of the rushing, some of the power play time, because that's not his role on that team. And that is a team that you go play at 17, at 16 and 17, uh, and you play your two years. The U18 World Championship is their Stanley Cup. Absolutely. And they won it again this year. They are always competitive. They've go always ahead, got some Seattle. great players. Yeah. But you're put in a role Seattle to be successful selects, in that role. And, and when you Seattle. transition from there, Seattle, four, usually Seattle. straight into college or college Seattle from there, selects, right into the National Hockey Seattle. League, you understand what it's like to be on a winning team and be a winner at that program. And you take the players from those teams, they're understanding. This is what I want you to do. Fine, coach. I'll do it. I'll do it to the best of my ability. All right. So on the clock at 181, the Minnesota Wild. We'll wait for that pick. They have a couple of minutes left to go, but it doesn't seem like time is going slow at this point. We are flying here. Quick timeout, and we're back to finish up the draft live from Nashville. The 2023 Upper Deck NHL Draft is here. Scan the QR code on your screen to collect a piece of history with this free digital card set featuring some of your favorite number one. Welcome back to the 2023 Upper Deck NHL Draft rounds two through seven here at Bridgestone Arena in Nashville. You can see teams still busy making their picks here as we're past the halfway point of round number six on the clock right now, 186, the New Jersey Devils. But while we're away at break, Reader, I know 180, Zeb Forshfall caught your eye. Uh, he did, and he catches your eye when he plays. Seattle's got a nice player here. You think of Seattle, you think of water. When you think of... Uh, talk water and hockey I always think of water bucks five foot nine this guy is a water buck he buzzes around the ice he's got exceptional hockey IQ he sees the ice so well had a fantastic U18 at eight points in the seven games also at five points in the 2022 Olympic Gretzky Cup where five games played in there it's a point a game guy he was the captain of his U20 team in Schleppfield Sweden and, and, and he is a is a leader, reliable, hardworking team player. There, that pretty much sums up what you're going to get at Fjordsfjell. And one thing, one thing about the, the the Swedish players, the Finnish players, the team players, you have to learn a 200-foot game. And, and even at 5'9", he plays both ends of the rink. Um, but when you're watch, we watch this team play at the U8 teams, he was very noticeable, not because of his size being the water bug syndrome to, all over the ice, but if, man, he sees the ice well. He makes players around him better, which is uh, ahead, always Colorado. a good trade. All right, the Devils Colorado taking from Seattle, Daniel Karpovich Jeremy at 186, Hansel. a defenseman out of the Colorado NHL select. over in Russia. Jeremy Played all of his Hansel hockey in Belarus until moving to the, Seattle, NL, the NHL this past season. 187, Jeremy Hansel. To the Boston Bruins. I don't know if he has a brother named Gretel, but we got Hansel <laughs> there to the Avs at 187. You know, I just want to roll back the tape here. Nathaniel Day at 184. You know, guys, we had that conversation a little bit early on about what happened second half of the year. Well, Day is one of those guys for Flint who had a great second half, especially down the stretch. I think he was like 13, 2, and 1, um, and, and then propelled Flint to, into the playoffs in the Ontario Hockey League. And that stretch of games, I think, really brought the attention to scouts. Uh, so it's nice to see that a guy has a stretch like that. Second half goes well for him ends up getting drafted by the Edmonton Oilers. Pretty cool stuff for Nathaniel Day. Getting back to Jeremy Hansel, a, a left shot defenseman played in Seattle. Uh, 6'1", 196, just taken by the Avs. Th this is a very smart and reliable player on the back end. Uh, he was a plus 70, six bests in a single season, WHL, ahead, since Boston. they've been tracking that stat. A plus 70 since 1990 was the since they've been tracking it. A plus 26 in the postseason. He's get, he gets it done five on five. Yes, he was on a good team, but those are absolutely crazy numbers. 48 points in 66 games. Plays in all three zones. Move the puck extremely well. And, and with Jeremy Hansel, another 2003 birthday. This is a player that has been passed over in not only one draft, but in two drafts. And his development just flourished this year on a very good team in Seattle and there's a player that the Colorado Avalanche go you know what we like you a lot we can bring you right in put you right in the system and uh, you know congratulations to Jeremy Hansel let's say uh, going through two drafts and now he's in 
with the abs. It was worth the wait. Go At ahead, 188, Dallas. the Boston Bruins, Ryan Walsh, centerman out of Cedar Rapids Angus in the USHL, is 79 points, set a Cedar Dallas Rapids Clark, franchise Angus record McDonnell. for the most in a From single season. 189, Hockey. Angus McDonald. Next Dallas Stars. Stars. Reader, I know you're familiar Carolina. with that organization and familiar with Angus. Uh, uh, Angus McDonnell had a tremendous, uh, a tremendous season. This young man had 29 goals in 64 with Mississauga. His coach James Richmond, coach GM, is a, 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 a great coach and mentor to a lot of young guys. He's got a very good team coming up in Mississauga. He was playing, uh, McDonnell was playing Carolina. in Sarnia. He came over with Port of Porto Martone in a deal Chicago for Luca Del Blues. And, and these two young guys Anderson. really took off. For the U18s, Carolina they were Michael tremendous. McDonnell more in that Chicago penalty killing role, but he can score United goals. States, but then when Washington. the team that, you know, another player that you can Next put him in a role on a team, and he's just going to him. excel at that role. Uh, he's got high, high energy at 5'9", 180, another player that doesn't play on the perimeter. He plays through traffic, gets to the scoring areas, and I honestly really thought that McDonnell might go a little bit earlier. I figured he'd be in, like, maybe a fourth-round pick, but you know what? At 5'9", at maybe it scared some teams, go but ahead, good for man. Dallas to take a chance uh, in the sixth round of McDonnell. I'm a big fan. Uh, you know, some of the things you look at there, Reader, obviously the offense was nice, but... 92 Florida pimps. Selects. Like, this kid is in ball. Yeah. You know, he's almost Former got that little man syndrome where I'm going to, you think I'm not going to be hard to play against? Just watch me. And he did that Final at the Worlds, order. too. He was barking. Selection I was sitting up the uh, behind the, the net there, the and there was a little bit of scrum Knights. right below me there in Switzerland. And he's just right in the grill of his opponent. <laughs> you love those guys, right? Little rat mentality. I like it. Speaking Mike. of uh, teammate, Porter Martone. Oh, look out for him for next year. Hey, they were good at the yes. UAT. They were in a line, line together. Yes, very good. But uh, look out for Mississauga next year. At 190, Michael Emerson, drafted by the Carolina Hurricanes. This was another kid that was passed over in last year's draft, so congrats to him. Worth the wait. He gets picked this year in round number six. And then at 191, ahead, Florida Panthers selecting Luke Coughlin, defenseman out of Ramuski in the queue. Two of his favorite NHL Vegas defensemen Flex, to watch, Tory Krug Thomas, and Jordan Morgan Riley. So, you know what's interesting? Give you a sense the way he likes to play. Yes. What's, what's interesting here, guys, is we're still feeling the effects of the pandemic. I mean, don't don't get yourselves wrong here. Whether it was in minor hockey or your draft minus two year, it still wasn't the, the perfect scenario when it comes to the pandemic. And so some of these guys that have been through the draft once or twice before are getting caught up on their development. And I think that speaks to part of the reason as to why we're seeing those players who are in their second and third year of eligibility along with the reasons we've discussed previously. But I do believe the pandemic has also had an impact there. All right, we're on to round number Thank seven you. here, 193. Uh, Jason, I know at 192, uh, Thomas Oranen, a right winger of out of the Finnish Junior League. To all, yeah, he's an interesting uh, player. I mean, you know, he pretty much played, I have to say, to the same identity throughout the course of the entire season. Not a lot changed. I, I was looking back on my scouting reports heading into the draft, and what I like about this kid, I gave him eights across the board in his skating, so explosiveness, separation, and agility. So that part really was my kind of launching pad to see if I could have more interest in him. And I do. I think he's got a high motor. They use the same words with their high motor. Uh, you know, I like that he skates. He's got some energy. Um, in and out offense. We'll see where that goes. But, uh, hey, I have him as a fourth line forward on projection. A compete guy at the bottom of the lineup. See high motor, so we'll see how that yeah. motor runs Let's in the years to come. All right, round number seven officially underway right now. The Tampa Bay Lightning on the clock. We'll take a timeout. We'll be back to wrap up the final 32 picks here in the 2023 NHL Draft. Welcome back. The seventh round of the 2023 NHL Draft is officially underway here in Nashville, Tennessee. We are not hanging out on Broadway. We are hanging out on the draft floor uh, here at the draft. And uh, we're about to talk to Tom Fitzgerald. So let's take a look at some notable acquisitions uh, since 2021. And in this week in particular, uh, Tom, you have been a busy, busy, busy guy. Busy and successful in getting some of these uh, items on your to-do list done. The big ones, of course, uh, signing Timo Meyer to a nice big extension and then a Acquiring Tyler Toffoli as well in a trade. I, I'm going to start with Tyler Toffoli because I, I saw some interviews that you did yesterday talking about um, the long-term future of Tyler Toffoli and not, you know, acquiring a player unless you wanted them to be around for a little while. What kind of conversations have you had with him about that? Well, again, you know, one, 
what he does on the ice is the most important thing to us. I hear he's a fantastic human being. Mm -hmm. um, that's second with us. We want good people. We want people who want to be in New Jersey. Um, the second part, well, that'll take care of itself. You know, like, just like Eric Holland. Just like yeah. Timo Meyer, you know, these guys come in, see what we're all about, live in the area, the travel, great restaurants at your fingertips, um, and, and not to mention, really good team. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. You've built a terrific team. You had a great season this year, and you know, you add a guy like Toffoli, as Jackie points out. I mean, he's a really a talented player, can help fill out your top six, can score, and he's got experience in big moments, right? But let me ask you about the discussion with Timo Meyer because that was one of those things we weren't sure if it was going to drag on, right? I'm sure you and you got him even. It was like, you know, you had confidence you could get it done, but you're never 100% sure. Mm -hmm. How did that go over the last couple of weeks till finally getting it figured out? Well, his agent, Claude Lemieux, he just he was, he was a pleasure to work with. Okay. You, know, you know, deal making is something that you, you, you need a partner yeah. and you need to negotiate with a partner. Um, the most important thing was Timo really wanted to be in New Jersey. Yeah. He really wanted Timo in New Jersey. Um, I really have to tip my hat to our ownership group, led by David Blitzer and Josh Harris. Like, they've given me the resources to actually put this team together um, the way I, we see it as a hockey operations group. Uh, so, you know, we got a lot of good people in our op operations that we, we've got a we got great processes going on yeah. to make proper decisions. Um, but you need the backing of your ownership. But again, I. I really love New Jersey, yeah. and I and I think people who don't know New Jersey have to experience it to understand that passion that we have as an organization. Fair enough. Uh, well, it's safe to say it's been a busy week. You've got University another pick uh, coming up here in the seventh Middlestead. round. Take us sort of inside what it is like at the draft Canadians table. Like, like what really goes on as you get deeper into the draft, and and the picks become, I, I would imagine, a, maybe not harder might be a dramatic word, Panthers. but just kind of how the the day progresses at the draft table. Again, the, the work that our amateur staff does, the travel, um, the, the passion they have for players, uh, the debates that they have, arguments at times, um, yeah. that's all I'm asking. I want, I want a group that pushes each other. I want a group that is... You want passion. You know, yeah, and you know what? They have to have a growth mindset. They want to be able to get better. They, we all don't know everything. Yeah. You know, so we're all we're an organization that uh, believes in that development. But you know what? We break it down into certain groups, uh, the passion levels, impact type players, elite players. And you're right. As you go through the draft and come into the rounds, later rounds, I'm looking for lottery tickets. That's what yeah. I'm looking for. Yeah. So um, I just tell them, tell me who's got the highest ceiling. That's what yeah. I want. Yeah. Let me uh, let me ask you now. We got uh, the free agent window opening up. Uh, it's only like an hours. It seems like a couple <laughs> days away, right? I mean, it's been a busy week with the awards, and you guys were invested there, and then here at the draft, signing guys. What's on the table? What's left? You got some cap room to play with. Well, what are some of the things that uh, well, maybe you're looking at? Here. Obviously, there's been a lot it's of discussion about goaltenders, but man. what are you thinking about over the next couple of days? Really, to, to, to round out our group, man. you know, that maybe talking about our RFAs. Uh -huh. uh, maybe we're looking for something different, you know, on, on the wings. Capitals. Maybe we got, right now we have seven defensemen, inclu including Nemich. Yeah. Is he going to be ready? I don't yeah. know, have the answer. Um, so I've got to be prepared for that. Are we going out and getting somebody? Um, I, I will start with we'll start tomorrow with our group and yeah. go through really the, the, the checklist of things we really want to accomplish. You know, it's so cliche to say this, but you know, we talk all the time about one step at a time, right? The, the New Jersey Devils, Devils took such a huge step last year. What does the next step look like in terms of when the when the next regular season gets underway? <laughs> We all know what the next <laughs> is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Expectations, standards. Have all gone up. They've all gone up. They yeah. skyrocketed, and that's the fun part. You know, we <laughs> it wasn't fun selling off players for future assets, but that had to be done to get to the point where today we had to draft well and build a core uh, of, of young players to build around and then have more assets to yeah, actually trade. surround them. Um, but I go back to ownership who's given me the resources to, to, to go out and get a Dougie Hamilton, to re-sign a Timo Meyer, um, And it's up to them. Like, this is their fraternity. You know, they, they want to recruit players and tell them how great uh, we are. Um, even better. What do you think your guys learned from the, the playoffs this year? Young players, first playoff for many of them. What do you think they learned? It's hard to win a Stanley Cup. Yeah. You know, every team goes into the season wanting to win the Stanley Cup. You got to go four rounds, four hard rounds. We went two hard rounds, two more. Go ahead, Sam. So, 
again, surrounding these kids, and I say kids, they're, they're young men yeah. with, with winning pedigree. It starts with Palat, now yep. to Foley. Like, these, these, these guys understand what it takes to win, um, and they can pass it on. The culture that we're building, to me, I, I, I leave it up to the players. It's their room. You know, what you permit is what you promote. So uh, culture's a big thing for us. All right, I like that. Great answer. Yeah. Uh, Tom, thank you for hopping on Thanks the desk so much. with us. We really appreciate the time. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of the draft and uh, free agency right around the corner as well. We appreciate, appreciate the it. time. Thank you. All right, we're going to step aside for a quick timeout here, but we are making our way through the seventh round of the 2023 NHL draft here in Nashville. We'll be right back. The 2023 Upper Deck NHL Draft is here. Scan the QR code on your screen to collect a piece of history with this free digital card set featuring some of your favorite number one. Welcome back to the 2023 Upper Deck NHL Draft rounds two through seven. Rounds two through six are done. We are halfway through round number seven. Still a couple of kids in attendance here hoping that their name gets called in the final couple of picks here. A couple of names going off the board and some loud cheers still in attendance. Just trying to keep her awake at this point. Same with Ritter and Sam here up on the desk, but a little coffee. <laughs> That'll kick in Are you in a couple kidding? of minutes. I'm ready to rock. Let's I go. know you're always ready Let's to rock. Go. Hey, Reader, a couple of names that we did see up, go off the board here in round seven while we're at break. David Have Klee, Luke Middlestat. We know those last names, don't we? Yeah, and even Sam Mateo Mann. That's Trent Mann's son. David Klee is Ken Klee's son. Luke Middlestat is uh, brother Casey, of Casey Middlestat. So it's, it's bloodlines. And, you know, for David Klee, Ken Klee Washington was drafted by Washington, I think, in the ninth round. Played almost 1,000 games in the National Hockey League. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's good to see. And Mateo Mann. So his dad, Trent, is assistant general manager slash head scout with the uh, Ottawa Senators and the guy who's 6'6", 230. He is a rig. Straight line skating is decent. Agility probably needs a little bit of work. Played in Shakutami, picked up five assists this year. No doubt, he, no doubt he's that shut down uh, type of guy. So you're looking at 45 games played, a little suspension in the playoffs, New Year's Eve, baby. All right, but the fact is, he's been here once already. Back in 2016, he was a runner for the Ottawa Senators. Well, his dad was making all the picks. He was running around grabbing coffee for everybody. Go ahead, Ottawa. And is that, where, is uh, that where the scouting was? Footwork was really good. Was it said footwork <laughs> really good? That was yeah, so the going to get the coffee. I'm reading the scouting report. You're talking about him. He's a runner for the Ottawa Senators. That's pretty cool, though. That's, that's really yeah, cool. that's. That's Next nice. And, and you know what? I think Flames. the pressure from uh, not being in the organization that your dad in is dad is in is probably helpful. Uh, also look at the combine. So dad left the room. They, I mean, they interviewed him. Ottawa interviewed him. Dad left the room so that they could just go about their business without that sort of influence or awkward feeling in the room. And I love the fact that you go to an organization where you got to cut your own cloth and there's no um, from worry about Axel having bias Kirti. because your dad is the assistant general manager. Flames Jason, how about pick 202 Axel by the St. Louis Blues? St. Louis has had a fantastic couple of days and they're taking a swing here with the Russian player Nikita Susiev. I project him to be a 13th forward, but he's a type of guy that can't play in the middle of your lineup if he does make your roster. He's got to play in your top nine at worst. Mostly a motion player. When he does have the puck on his stick, you know, he protects it well, makes plays along the wall, and he can spin off checks. He's one of those guys. In motion and open ice, average plus skater, I would Go say. Ahead, Detail, uh, Boy, as you know, the, the, the really skilled yeah, Russian guys, reader, their detail ranges wildly, the right? So there's a lot of risk reward in his game, but it's AIK worth the swing for St. Louis at this stage. Next order selection. Love those risk reward Jets. players. You've got all sorts of skill. And all he needs one pan, one to pan out in the late picks, and you've got yourself a pretty good offensive player. Dennis Goodbog going at 209 to the New York Islanders as we make our way here through the final half of round number seven. Reader, how do you categorize this year's draft? Has there a team that really stood out to you that has impressed you over the course of the last 48 hours? You know, I, I think uh, Philadelphia for me, as I look at Mateo Mann, we talked about Mateo Mann, but I mean, you, you think in the first round, uh, they take a flyer uh, well, with Mishkov, and in their seventh round, they're taking a six foot six from Mateo man. And, Connor uh, Levi. you know, it, they are they're changing the culture in Philadelphia. Connor and to change Levi the culture, you've got to take some Western swings at things, and you've got to be uh, pretty Next bold and brass and do things Bay that you Lake. do. And I think Philadelphia's done that for me. All right, Sam, at 210. 
Connor Levis from the Kamloops Blazers right winger. He's going to the Winnipeg Jets. Yeah, 6'1", 190 pound right shot guy. Uh, a late 04 birthday from Vancouver is playing with the Kamloops Blazers. Had the opportunity to play in the Memorial Cup. And a good finish to the season with 19 points in his final 13 games. He had a six game goal streak going back to March. Picked up a couple of points for the Blazers in the Memorial Cup. A point per game over there, four games. A little bit of a disappointing end to the season for the Blazers who ahead, got beat out in round three, had to wait around a little while, and then finally uh, bowed out in the Memorial the Cup. So, guy's got a little bit of grit to his game. Smart guy, scholastic player of the year. Be interested to see what Connor Levis is able to do here. Something I just want to point out to you guys, just from a scouting perspective here, is you've seen a couple of guys like Mateo Mann and Axel Herdick go off the board here late. These are the picks that the analytics community absolutely detests when we make it to the table because they fit into the category of defensive defensemen, and they really don't enjoy that. But the reality <laughs> is, when you do become a playoff team, Guys like Luke Shen and all these other guys, you're looking for them, right, when you become playoff contenders. And and that's exactly what Axel Hurtig is as well. He's a big body, uh, no flash and dash to his game whatsoever. Average skater, he's got to get another 15 points out of his stride to make it. But means on guys, he's got range, he knows what he is, gets the puck, chips it to space, off they go somewhere else. Ethan really, Hay. Go yeah, ahead. really excited about Ethan Hay here. This is a guy who plays for Flint. I uh, was talking to Ted Dent last week about him, uh, the head coach, and now not the general manager, but was up until this year. This is a straight line player. He's got a ton of speed. He's hugely responsible. And I think about where Tampa is and what they've done in the past. I think about Rob Credimura as a scout there who looks after Ontario and, and what they've done with their players. They identify a certain characteristic and a certain player and a player type, and they go after that player. Like Anthony Sorelli, when you saw him, he was so slight, but he was a hugely responsible player. I think Hay works along those same sort of lines. Uh, he's a physical specimen. You know he's going to put the work in. Pretty interesting to see that he ends up with the Tampa Bay Lightning here at pick 211. At 212, Zachariah Wisdom for the Seattle Kraken right winger out of Cedar Rapids in the USHL. He was passed over in last year's draft. Older brother, Zaid, a fourth-round pick of the Flyers back in 2020. I haven't uh, checked the numbers, Sammy, but the Flint Firebirds have had a heck of a two yes, days. Yes, they have. Yeah, yeah we've, we've Nathaniel Day, the goalie. Flint. Yes, yeah. and he's Petrie. from Flint. From Flint, yes. Yeah. And, and that just goes to show that if you run a, a quality program, now I don't care what league you're in, and you provide stability to youthful players, you can develop players that's good for everybody involved. And that's just it. They, they kind of sit under the radar in the Ontario Hockey League. You know, they had some issues with the past, but now they've got a guy who's got a lot of experience as a head coach and Ted Dent there. They've started to make some changes in their hockey ops department to split the duties of head coach and general manager, which I believe is absolutely essential. And when you talk about developing players, and you're thinking about the Petries and the Hayes and the and the goaltender. Um, you know, real, really good stuff coming out of Flint right now. Great facility, too. If anybody wants to get on the tour and go watch a game, don't underestimate Flint. They've done a great job in that arena. It's a real nice spot. James Clark going to the wild here at 213. Left winger out of Green Bay in the USHL. Committed to the University of Minnesota. So he's got to be thrilled at the team that selected him here at pick 213 in round number seven. Take a look at the uh, scouting report here. Sneaky release and budding offensive skill set. Extremely motivated and a natural leader. 23 points in the final 23 yeah. games of the USHL There season. you go. Those late looks, they're, they're pretty important. I mean, we've seen a lot of players. I mean, I take all of Team Sweden, really. And think about their end to the year at the under-18. We saw six Casper go in the first round, Madison. largely because they really performed well at that under-18. Now, Bruins you're not going to just put it all Casper in one tournament, obviously, but that Starris recency Starris bias is a nice thing to have um, if you're a player and something you got to be a little bit leery of if you're a scout. And that's a, that's the tough thing is to wash that away when you see a guy and you're like, wow. Yeah. And uh, uh, that's the that's the one thing about the U18s. It's the last tournament for a lot of players who don't play in the in their you know whether it's CHL playoffs or you, wherever you're done. And all of a sudden you get there and you have a big tournament ahead, that can really know. take you yeah. to another level. And we've seen it. You said it. We've From seen it. Sweden having a great Nicholas tournament, getting to the Castle. final. 
and almost winning that, losing in overtime. Then how many players from that team would be drafted? Very responsible. I can tell you from experience, it makes for fascinating arguments in your draft room. I bet. Well, because at the beginning of the summer, the three of us were there at the Holinka. We see a kid who just, you know, like Edward uh, Shalley, you know, he was outstanding right at the yep. Holinka. Yes. And then he goes away a little bit and he comes back. You like, so you're going to have a scout who's going to reference that great tournament in August. And if I argue with him, well, he didn't end the season very well. He's going to counter that by saying, well, your guy you're arguing with me just had a great under 18. So what's the difference? So it's, it's a marathon that you have to take their entire body of work. But you're absolutely right. The lasting impression is the last. Like yeah, that last yeah. tournament sticks with you. Tough part for Shallow was that was Go that he Edmonton. he played From against Maryland men all year and hardly didn't Matt play a lot. Yeah, he didn't get the minutes didn't get that the he minutes. need to get. That, that he need to play? And all of a sudden Matt he got Capone the tournament and he wasn't in game oh. shape. And now all of a sudden you're not in game shape because you're not Just playing your regular minutes. Yeah. You're used to playing you know, 10 to 12 minutes. Now all of a sudden you put into 18 minutes, 20 minutes, um, and expected to be more responsible. It it, it it actually can can hurt you because I'm a huge fan of Shallow. I was surprised he didn't go higher, but I think that might have been the one the knock. Against them, and it wasn't his fault because he didn't play with men all year. But yeah. if he had played in a junior team, he would have been playing 20 minutes a game. Uh, for your yeah, and that's interesting. And there's stop. some some other guys like uh, Sandine Pelica played 114 games. Uh, can you imagine 114 no. games? When do you practice? My like, goodness, that's. And that's the thing with the Europeans, guys. They play on three, four different teams. Yeah, you know, yeah, they're, yeah. they're in the SHL. They're in the J20, the J18. They play in the national Next team events. Clock, like 114 games. That's, that's, uh, that's a Stanley Cup. That's more that's, than a Stanley Cup player. That's, that's more. Yes, yeah. that's more. Casper Nassen going to the Bruins at 214. Nicholas Van Tassel to the Ottawa Senators. A pick after that. And Matt Capone out of Merrimack College in Honky East to the Edmonton Oilers at 216. The Pony passed over in the NHL draft in both 2021 and 2022. So congrats to Capone on finally getting selected here by the Edmonton Oilers. Tied for the most goals on Merrimack this past season with 14. A responsible player that is very unselfish, versatile, has good motor, finishes his hits. He's a strong skater. So we're about to wrap up round number seven here, but they just made an announcement inside the building. I thought I heard Did you that. hear that? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you guys were just analyzing the picks. They're yeah, analyzing right. the weather outside, severe weather. So we might, we may be going around From 10, 11, 12 here this year. I don't know. Well, they did give us a bottle of bourbon, didn't they? From Ilvis Jr. I had one in my gift bag. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I'll tell you what. Nashville knows how to uh, get to the media's heart. <laughs> yeah, you provide a bottle kidding. of Jack. Yeah. Hey, there we go. Yeah, There's your Arvente. We're talking um, about him a little bit earlier. We were. Yeah. Here's another player with, with the Arvente. Last trade uh, as the general manager of the Nashville Predators. David Poyle is trading Nashville's seventh round pick in 2024 to the New Jersey Devils and their current general manager, Tom Fitzgerald, who was the first ever captain in the history of the Nashville Predators. For pick number two hundred and eighteen. That's that cool. That means that Nashville is on the clock. That that is really cool. What what a gesture right there. Like I, I love that. That's a career coming full circle, yeah, right? Yeah, the hockey world's very small. The connections, it's amazing uh, how it all comes around. This, this is isn't great. just a uh, this isn't just a hockey trade. This is a uh, this is a moment for these gentlemen here. Trotsy was. Uh, the first coach here with uh, with Fitzy back in the day, and of course David's been a staple here. And I was, uh, you know, I was fortunate to work here in Nashville under David and and develop a relationship with Trotsy. And I don't I don't know if they get any more classy than uh, those two gentlemen in that picture, guys. What a cool move! I, I love that. I think that's just a great great thing for David Poyle to be able to get back up in front of the home crowd one last time, make that final selection and uh, just put a bow on Go what's ahead, been an Nashville. unbelievable career. And when you look at what Boyle Nashville has done in his week, final uh, draft, rewards, how has he left the Nashville draft. Predators and moving forward? Like how do you guys think? Pretty strong situation? His amazing career. Let's listen. And thank him for everything that he's done for all of us at this table and throughout the organization. Uh, thanks, Fitzy, for the pick here in the seventh round. And David, we'd like you to make the selection. <clears throat> thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Bill Daly, the National Hockey League. Uh, thank you for the game of hockey for such a wonderful life. I, I would never want to change anything. So for my last pick of all time, this is the player, Aiden Fink from Brooks. Thanks, everybody.
standing ovation here inside Bridgestone for David Poyle and his final pick. And what a run it was as general manager, the winningest general manager in NHL history. Thousands and thousands of games. That's amazing stuff. You, you have to have the respect for a guy. No blemishes on the record. Everyone you talk to talks about a class guy. JB, you had the opportunity to work for him. What a, what a nice dedication here. And it's remarkable. You see so many players change teams, coaches move teams, management move teams. David Poyles had two teams. He's national. Yeah, manager. how about that? Absolutely Brooks remarkable. And if you're Aiden Fink, that's a pretty cool moment, right? Next selection <laughs> belongs to the Colorado Avalanche. I think we should touch on uh, Yarventi, give him some love here too, Reader, because that's uh, that's an interesting pick, isn't it, in the seventh round? Yeah, I I, I like Yar Yarventi. He's, he's 5'10", 167. He's got some weight to put on. Uh, very skilled offensively, and again, he's got a, a motor that just doesn't quit. He's go go go, uh, and you can see right in the bottom, plays bigger than he is, and that is that says a lot about a player. He's got a very high compete level. Uh, and his speed is really what sets sets him apart. When when there's a loose puck and it's open ice, Yarventi has got that speed that he can absolutely get to those loose pucks, and he's fearless. You see in this play, this is in a battle. He plays in the U18s. Uh, he is a player that goes into the tough areas, the areas you don't want to go to, and a lot of players have to get to. Not being a big guy at 167. He put some weight on that 510 frame. Uh, I, I think this. I think Garventi could be a real steal for the Penguins. I think that uh, one of my takeaways, guys, uh, with some of these, and for some of our viewers, you know, kids that are watching out there, guys like Gavin Brindley, Emily Garventi, the smaller guys in the stature. Reader couldn't have said it any better. You have to find a way to get under checks, go to traffic, and be aggressive. Be hard to play against. Don't just be a perimeter guy. Go to those hard areas. Give us a reason to like you beyond just your skill set. Well, I'll give you an example. Okay, let's look at the Arizona Coyotes. Since they started this draft, okay, Arizona has made two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve picks. Not one of them is under six foot in twelve picks. So think about that. So if you're a smaller player, you have to find that dynamic element and that ability to do the Go things ahead, you talked about. Because there are teams that From might not even be looking at you all Christian at, at all, and now your uh, opportunity shrinks. So really take advantage of what's given to you and, and work hard to do some of the things that maybe others don't want to do. Los Angeles, another team that drafts big players, big players by Los Angeles as well. But uh, absolutely right. I mean, it's you know you, you have to force you have to force general managers, coach, you have to force heads to turn uh, because sometimes your your stat sheet is ah uh, he's, he's slight. It's not tall. You know what? It's what you do on the ice that really matters. You, if you can't do a pull-up, I've heard players couldn't do pull-ups at the uh, combine, and that yeah. one of them just played in the cup final. <laughs> seemed to work out all yeah. right. It doesn't matter how many, you know, how fast you can run, how many pull-ups you can do, how many push-ups you can do. It matters what you do on the ice. And at the end of the day, that's what teams want. Teams want guys who compete yep. and who who play the game. And you always hear the right way, Sebastian and that's Bradshaw that's really the main Pond. thing when you're drafting, and especially when you're drafting sixth, seventh round. Next I want these guys who are going to compete, and you will will help them develop. Romero, Skedlika, Christian Kostadinsky, and most recently at 221, Sebastian Bradshaw for the Dallas Stars. As we await the final three picks here of round seven to conclude our 2023 NHL entry draft. Do you think Carolina trades it back? I don't know, but they've they've kept us waiting all day <laughs> long. Every time they got under the uh, 62nd mark. I keep coming back to this every year, right around this range. But uh, this is don't don't discount this pick. I mean, Paul Gallagher. Yep. Paul Gallagher worked for for us in Florida out there in Halifax. Did a heck of a job. Mackenzie Weger was right in this area here. He's had a pretty good career. So. Anybody that's uh, out there as a seventh round pick, put in the work. You never know what's going to happen. Yeah, out there. It's not a throwaway pick. I mean, th that's uh, pretty obvious to Carolina that they're taking the time. They're scouring their notes and they're going through their list and they're making sure that they get this thing right. They're not throwing the pick away. There are plenty of teams that would like to have eight, nine rounds. Yeah. Like there, there are teams that say, you know what? I, I'd, I'd like to have a couple more oh. we, 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 and that the scouts would love to have. What do we have? Twelve back in. Back in the day. Back in the day. 12 to 16 rounds. In the, what about you as the analyst today? You want to keep going? No, I, I, I'm happy with seven <laughs> rounds. Hey, this is nothing compared to where we were when we were sitting in studio through COVID. We were Ooh. eight hour oh, live days. Eight hour round one. And teams Ooh. were picking. And yeah, I loved it when my ex teammates were now in management were texting me. And, well, I'm just ready to go out and have dinner. I'm like, it's the fifth round. What do you mean? Yeah, we don't have a pick for another two rounds. Hey. 
That's, that was, that was, that was an hour and a half. Yeah. He'd go to yeah, dinner right. and come back. They it was going so long. Notes. We had guys leaving for Europe oh, in the middle of that this, show. This, this is great. I mean, Listen, this my is... kids, Kian and Caden, and my wife, Michelle, they're going to tell you that I'm not a technology guy, and it's partly a science because the more I know, then they're going to expect me to do it the next time, right? So it's a little bit of science. <laughs> But hey, we got Mike Kelly. We should uh, do fax still. machine stuff in this league. <laughs> yeah. Well, I know what a fax machine is. What is that? No, yeah, I'm just exactly. kidding. Let's send it down to exactly. let's fax things down to Mike Kelly. He's back on the draft floor. I think he's still down there, Mike. Still hanging out. I'm here. Thanks, fellas. Um, as we know, Carolina, as you mentioned, likes to take their full time. So I'll throw one player in the mix, hasn't gone yet, who I had, you know, it's kind of a mid round guy, and that's Tomaso DeLuca. He's an undersized center. Played in Spokane uh, for the Chiefs this past season, a Swiss guy. Look, when we're talking about these types of players, you're, you're, you're taking a swing and you're hoping that maybe something can develop in, in that sense. But he's a guy that can make people miss. A, and again, he's not six plus feet, but he battles. He's competitive, he's feisty. Um, you look at his trend line, it dipped a little bit towards the end of the season. Maybe that's why there's some hesitation in drafting the player at this point. But we're talking about pick number 222, 23, 24 right now. If it were me, I'd roll the dice. I'd take a look at this guy. All right. Well, I'm taking a look at you uh, off camera here. And, and what happened to your co-host? Where'd they go? EJ and Jackie. Oh, they're they done. just they're, done. they're, they're, they're uh, down there the talking off. with everybody. <laughs> right? Look at you, you Mr. Losing with everybody. The yeah, yeah, Come yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. Talking about t uh, technology, there's EJ in the background yeah. just working the phone. Look at him, he can't hear us. They're looking to see if there's more trades coming. They're he's, still doing the work. He's got his credentials on. He's got his oh, credentials He's trying to book on. an earlier flight. He's going he's to the buffet. To Who's kidding here? He's going oh. to the buffet. Oh, what do they got, goodness. Thursday Night Raw? Where's Jack? Oh, yeah. No, he's he's Google mapping how to get to Tootsie's right now. EJ Raddick. <laughs> Love it. Look at him. There, there he is. is. Uh, EJ, Jackie, and Lindsay, our field producer on the ground here. Uh, look, it, it doesn't happen with a lot of the people behind the scenes here. We've got a great cast and crew here at the NHL Network, both here and in our studios back in Secaucus. So we Playing appreciate Carolina. all their hard work. Hey, here we go, Carolina. From Dynamo, Minsk, Belarus, Yegor Vilmakin. Carolina selected Yegor Vilmakin. All right, so Belarus. it took some time. But in comes the picket, 222. Igor Vilmakin. Next up, Pittsburgh at 223. I don't know if we're going to see the clock go to zeros here. From a GM's perspective, you get to this point. We get a day off tomorrow, and then all of a sudden, free agency, July 1. What does this schedule look like? When do you turn the attention? How much prep is already done? Like, How does that stack up as far as priorities? From Joker at Finland, Cali, Kangas. So every team's different. Uh, some teams don't bring their From pro scouting staff to the draft. Others do. We did. And we would run a series Kangas. of uh, pro meetings uh, in conjunction with what was going on on the amateur side. So Dale and, and his people would uh, kind of bounce back and forth so that when we hit free agency out of here, they're prepared the for that development camp shortly thereafter. But certainly the strategy is uh, a little bit different for every team. All right, Cali Kangas, 223. And you have the Stanley Cup champions, Vegas Golden Knights. On the clock, the round out, our 2023 NHL draft. We'll wait for the official announcement here. But while we do that, you can see the backpacks are going on. Where are you going? Uh, we got the warning. Stay put, fellas. No. It was going to be a mad dash to Broadway. Yeah. And now we're staying put here inside Bridgestone Arena. Hold on, ladies Guys, and well, gentlemen. Well, while we got a break here just at the end, I, I got to give a shout out to somebody on our staff that I've got to know the last couple of years, Lawrence Goldstein. Uh, well, the yeah. amount of work, the, the amount of work this guy puts into uh, our draft packets and the amount of player information. I've been around the league a long, long time, and I would find it hard to believe there's anybody that does a better job. So I want to give him a shout out. I think he just the excellent work. Well said. Well said. First star, certainly every year for us here at the NHL Network. Heck, he could be on this set and just doing oh, this no thing. Kidding. I was doing this say, thing by himself. Yeah, yeah. He, he yeah. knows. Like, the, there, there are plenty of players in the information that LG gets and the, the scouts and the people he talks to. It's a, it's remarkable. Work, buddy. Absolutely remarkable. The and we, when you say together. talks to, oh, it's not just no, Google it's, searching. It's, no. This guy's on the phone oh, hours yeah. at a time speaking to people in those organizations and the scouts that he knows. And he, I, it is the real deal. And this guy puts in hours upon hours behind the scenes to help us put on what we do here for day two of the draft. He hates that we're talking about him right now. 
but we appreciate him yes. nonetheless. Thanks, buddy. Oh, we're hearing possible trade coming down the pipe. We might get some booze in the building. Two twenty four. Possible thunders. Well, yeah, here's some yeah. rumbling yeah. going on. That's okay. We're not going anywhere. That's the hockey god saying, "Let's get out. Let's get after it." All right, we wait. Yeah, there's another boomer in the building. The hockey guys don't want David to call it a career yet. They're just telling him. Yeah, hang in for a bit. Go hang with your buddies for a little yeah. bit. You now you think about well, uh, the Vegas Golden Knights, just one drafted player, uh, one player that they drafted on their team in Nick Hague. So mm. uh, obviously going about winning the Stanley Cup in a much different manner, but obviously still very successful. Wasn't it recently that we had a, uh, it was the final pick of day two and their team called a timeout. Didn't that happen? Hold on, that Close was us. It. That was us. It was Florida. <laughs> it was Florida. 2016. Oh, yep. Oh, we're getting a trade. Let's listen. Thanks for bringing it up again. Buddy. Sorry, Jason. The Vegas Golden Knights have traded the final pick in the 2023 NHL draft to the Columbus Blue Jackets. So this is pick number 224 to Columbus for a seventh round pick in 2024. Which means Columbus will now have the final selection in the 2023 NHL draft. All right, so the Vegas Golden Knights trading away the last pick at 224 to Columbus in exchange for a seventh round pick coming up in 2024. So Columbus now on the clock. Go down and scour the floor and maybe collect a couple of those books. Go ahead, Columbus. <laughs> From Qu Quebec Major Junior League, Drummondville, Tyler Biddle. That's a good pick. Yeah. That is a good I'm so pick. happy Drummond for that guy. And he's here. How cool is that? Oh, yeah. Well, he was a projected guy early on That's in the year. I mean, he started with eight, eight goals in his first NHL nine games with Drummondville a, a couple uh, of years ago, and then really and, uh, had some difficulty finding that, uh, that uh, that touch after ball. that. You see his dad, Thank Brad, you. to his left there, head coach uh, of CIS hockey and the Atlantic Canada and man that has got to be so such a relief to be sitting there I thought he I would thought he would have gone earlier for sure but good on Ty sticking it out now it's all in your court buddy Tyler pedal the last pick at 224 to the Columbus Blue Jackets speaking of sticking it out we appreciate you sticking it out with us we'll take one final break here from Bridgestone Arena in Nashville we'll be back to put a bow on the 2023 NHL entry draft next the 2023 Upper Deck NHL Draft is here. Scan the QR code on your screen to collect a piece of history with this free digital card set featuring some of your favorite number one draft picks. Get yours today, only on UpperDeckEPAC.com. Welcome back inside Bridgestone Arena here as we conclude the NHL entry draft from Nashville. Uh, what a day it was, what a week it was with the awards and the draft at the same location for the first time uh, in NHL history, and it certainly made for a lot of fun. It was a fun day, always is a fun day with you guys. Uh, Jason, before we say goodbye, what were your final thoughts, your takeaways from day number two? Well, a couple of notes. I thought Philadelphia was interesting. They went shopping uh, in the London Knights uh, shopping cart, if you will. They took uh, Bonk in the first round and then uh, Denver Barkey in the third round today. So that was interesting. They're going to have their development, the people uh, living in London part time for sure to look after those prospects. The other thing that I took notice of, guys, was that the Nashville Predators reinvested a lot of the draft capital that they accumulated last year in Montreal. So they came here hosting the draft, a lot of picks. They kicked it down the road a little bit more, picked up an extra third, fourth, and sixth for 2024. We're going to come back and congregate next year. The 2024 draft is elite as well. Greater. Uh, Matt Vigmichkov going to Philadelphia. I, I really like what Danny Breer did. Keith Jones, uh, they, they took a bold move and a bold risk uh, with Michkov. Uh, not expected to be here for another three years, 2026, when his contract runs out. He's a heck of a player. Could be a dominant player in the National Hockey League, and uh, I like what they did. Sammy? Well, I'm talking about Connor Bedard. It's his draft. It's his coronation. Now we get to see what he can do in the National Hockey League. But aside from that, I'm looking at the Arizona Coyotes. They shook up the board on day one, going with Dmitry Simashev at number six. They stayed true to the course. Daniil Boot at number 12. Of all their 12 picks, none of them below six feet, and only one of them at six foot. Everyone's six two or above. Three goalies, three defensemen, heavy reliance on Russia, especially early. 
really interesting stuff. All right. Uh, always great stuff from you guys. We always appreciate it. Look forward to doing it again uh, next year. But for this year, we're going to say goodbye from Bridgestone Arena here in Smashville. Connor Bedard, the number one overall pick. Maybe a surprise at number two with Leo Carlson. Adam Fantilli goes number three. Like we said, dreams are made in this city for country music. But for today, dreams made for different reasons. On the ice, the next step towards the ultimate goal of making the NHL.